Hello class and uh, everyone else. In this video, I'm going to show something a little different. Um, I'm going to basically show how I've drawn this entire drawing we see up here on screen from start to finish. Um, usually I break down my videos into small tasks, so if you need to know how to draw some wood, you can look at it easily. If you know how to draw some stones, some trees, whatever the case might be, you can watch those videos individually. But that doesn't get to the larger questions, the bigger whole of the building and how you compose an image. And so I figured I'd take some time and show that in today's drawing. Um, and it might take some time. We'll see how long it goes. Um, so. What I did for this drawing, it's a collection of SketchUp, Enscape rendering, and Illustrator drawing, and Photoshop drawing, which is a very typical way I work. So I'll show most of those pieces. I might skip over some things. Well, I will sketch, skip over some things like Photoshop modeling, which is, you know, different content than composing a drawing. So um, the last thing I wanted to just talk about, the architecture real quick before I jump in. Um, Basically, I need to create a sample drawing for some teaching in class, and I also submitted this to a drawing competition. The students I was working with in another class actually had an assignment to do an interpretation of the Farnsworth house. Uh, of course, they were learning rendering, so they were young, young architecture students. Um, what I decided to do was, since uh, you know, I basically made an interpretation of the glass house, figured if there already is an interpretation of the Farnsworth house, why don't I take it one step further? What I'll do is I'll use some more natural materials, use less glass to uh, make it more sustainable. And um, and so, so it's an interpretation of interpretation. Really, it was a chance to show the students that um, often their houses sort of went in wild directions as they often do. It's like you can actually make a good design and keep it fairly simple, really stick to good architectural principles. Um, and then I, of course, help them render their own drawings for, for that class. Um, and this was my example of my rendering for them. Uh, so, you know, it's an interpretation of an interpretation. Um, I think it looks nice. So I started, I, I drew this all up at first in SketchUp. And so here is the SketchUp work. And um, you can see, actually, I decided to flip it. It's mirrored from the final image. And we'll get into that in the drawing. But, but I, I, I drew it up in SketchUp. That was sort of how I designed it. I just, you know, eyeballed the pieces together. I applied materials. I adjusted the colors. Um, I did render in Enscape. Uh, the white components you see, the tree, the people, these are lights all from Enscape. Again, I have videos on how to model in SketchUp. I have videos on how to render in Enscape. Feel free to watch those videos. But I, I composed this drawing. And then, of course, the important thing is I had to compose a perspective or a view. Um, and that took some time. I looked around. I did some sketches. I looked at precedent images about house renderings. I did all these things to sort of compose what would be a good perspective and I had that in mind as I said originally I took this shot it's actually mirrored from the final but but otherwise it's actually pretty close um, so you'll have to do the same like finding good perspectives finding good images while not technical is super important for content uh, development so I have the SketchUp I'm not going to show the rendering but if I jump back into Photoshop really quickly here would be an example of output right from SketchUp and Enscape. Now we'll get into the details as I use them in the assignment. I actually had multiple different exports. I had ex exports without the glass. I had exports with some lighting on the inside. I had exports with just lines and things like that. That's how I sort of take an image like this, uh, which looks like a computer rendering, and sort of t turn it into an image like this, which is meant to have more texture, more feel, more intimacy. Um, a lot of it is drawing in Illustrator and Photoshop, but a lot of it is separating out those layers from SketchUp. But that's all sort of straightforward stuff, and I will review that, that as needed. Now, actually, the first thing I really did is I actually started a file in Illustrator. So I jumped into Illustrator here. Uh, I know it can be tricky to sometimes see the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator from a user interface standpoint. So I'll try to try to be clear when I've jumped software here. Uh, but I jumped into Illustrator. I, this is an 11 by 17 page. Uh, and what I did is I... Um, just placed in a simple rendering, just any rendering from SketchUp with the right perspective. So I'll have to go and do that now. So uh, to create a new layer, there we go, layer there, file, place, and um, 
what I did is I have a bunch of folders, you know, if I have a, I have a SketchUp Alpha folder. And for this, is I'm just creating a base right now, so really it doesn't much matter. In fact, I might just take my original SketchUp lines only and place that into here. So, because I'll be doing a lot of drawing over top, uh, just to give me some some sense of base. Now, I, um, I might not get, create the original image perfectly. Um, I think what I did, for example, is I, I think I actually extended the house. I made it a little larger in the end and um, might not match my final drawing exactly. Um, but maybe I even made the, all that white space just the 11 by 17 or got pretty close. I, I, it doesn't matter. Again, it's your composition. You know, one of the things this video won't show is like the choices I made of mirroring it and not mirroring, moving moving the house left or right, composition issues. Like there's lots of trial and error in these things. The same with when rendering styles I did. Let me try this color or that color or this texture or that texture. All that stuff was trial and error. It wasn't like I just did it one shot like will be shown in this video. But, um, you know, approximately here is about the size of the house I used. Um, and I did mirror it. Again, that didn't come right away, but I might as well um, do that now because I know that's what I did in the final image. So I'll just reflect this here. Oops. And so that's my 11 17 base, which I just used because a lot of the elements, like the, the stone wall we see up front, all the trees in the back, and actually even some building materials, actually they started with drawings from Illustrator. And so this is just to give me a guide in Illustrator. Now what I also have to do is I'm just going to select this and copy it, and I'm going to jump into Photoshop because uh, what I have here in Photoshop is I, I have another sheet uh, another image and this is going to be what the final composition is um, and so I'm just going to paste this image right into here as pixels it's fine and I'm going to make it sort of large this this image size I think is like 100 by 60 pixel uh, inches at 72 dpi I don't know what the exact pixel count is um, and I left some room on the page because I, I drew outside the frame so I'm just going to place this here as a start of a base let's call it you know just a base image and what I did is I'm going to show my rulers um, and just pull down rulers at the edge of this image and approximately and again I'll, I'll go and crop it later but the reason why I'm giving myself more drawing space is because I as I create things in Photoshop uh, and even Illustrator, I want to be able to draw sort of off to the sides and have some control. So I usually just give myself a little little extra white space around the edge. But I want to make sure as I'm setting this all up, I can, you know, align my page. And so I'll put those guides in as a start of where I think the final image. Again, I ended up cropping it in the end, but, you know, this is a good place to start. And actually, you'll notice I actually have another um file Photoshop that's blank because actually there's a lot of work I did in Photoshop because it got quite complicated so there's background work and foreground work I did a lot of that in a separate file and only pulled in the final result so this this image was like a composition of everything and it was big in itself but since some of the individual pieces got big I actually did them in a separate file this is also an 11 by 17 sheet to match my illustrator file so so this is the exact size of illustrator file a match it sort of comes in into here. And if I wanted to, I probably could take the time to make sure my guides were perfectly at the 11 by 17 or matching DPI mark, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the great thing about Photoshop. So it does take a lot of, lot of work to go from SketchUp to Illustrator to Photoshop, but uh, again, the benefit is sort of all this control that you get out of it. Um, and so one of the things I could do um, is I could start composing this image in uh, Photoshop, you know, starting with the actual building materials themselves. It's, um, and so I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so um, what I'm going to do first is I'm ac actually going to make a group here in Photoshop. And I'll just call it house because I'll have a lot of, a lot of house layers um, from even being pulled in. And the first thing I will do is I'm going to start with just my materials. So again, if, if I go to open and we go um, and look at this, I call it SketchUp output here, but it's all what was done in Enscape um, for the final rendering through SketchUp. Um, I started with this one that's materials only, which is of course, is, it's, an, it's the natural way to um, um, do any photo real rendering. We have rendering engine. This is gonna show the, the house 
um, with no lines or in fact I actually turned off shadows in this one as well although I did set a good sun position that should be noted but I turned off shadows because um, I wanted those separate because I want to control all those elements differently so there's one thing I did do in Enscape here and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this file and paste it into to my image here and um, we can see I'm gonna have to mirror it because every time each each time this is gonna have to be mirrored so um, I'll go to edit, transform, flip horizontally, and we'll see how this fits in. If it fits in well I'll, using my guides on the edges there, and I'll just scale this up. It's probably going to be too small um, there. So I might want to uh, readjust my guides to, to sort of match this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this temporarily, and I'm going to just give it a little bit of transparency because I want to match it fairly close to what I have in Illustrator as a scale, although the um, it do, doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And we can see by setting the transparency, I can see through it. And actually, I got pretty close to it, actually, right on there. Uh, it's a little big, so I'm just going to do Control-T to get that, a shortcut to scale and just scale this in a little bit on this side. And get Again, pretty close. Don't probably need to get super accurate so so there we'll go so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to adjust my guys I'm going to turn off this base um, that was a good place to start uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and take my guides and just shift them to the end of this these these endscape images and that's because I'm going to place a, a bunch of these so um, um, I, I can just snap to the guides from now on and turn that off so I can see Ooh, I gotta turn my transparency back up now so I can actually see this thing Come over here. There we go. Just so I could see the white edge a little better, I turned off the background. So now when I when I bring in my other Enscape layers, I should be pretty good. Now in the end, what I'll we'll end end up doing is um, I will you know adjust brightness, contrast, levels, whatever sort of such things. Probably add filters, and that will be developed over the course of time. Even details like shadows and things like this um, will be developed over the course of time but for now we'll continue with sort of the base of this house and so one of the things I found that I, I think was semi unintentional I, I made an error at some point in SketchUp and, and exporting I think it might be a layer that I turned off is I actually lost the ceiling plane I had a ceiling plane in here um, so we're really seeing the edge of the roof surface which is this dark color but I wanted it to be light so you know what it's Photoshop so I faked it so I just made a new layer called it ceiling and you know I basically used my polygon lasso tool and I just sort of zoomed in I said okay well this whole thing needs to be white so I went to the edge I could use I could probably use uh, like my magic wand here or something better than the uh, polygon lasso tool but so be it um, I've already selected it this isn't good over here and I there's some lighting conditions up on here that I ended up probably losing a little bit of, but in the end, that's okay. I didn't like this dark image. I just sort of traced out that chimney from this wood stove. That's this is the chimney of the wood stove. Yeah, I, you know, I had some fun with the 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 materials. I got that bear, I think, from SketchUp Warehouse. I was trying to think, okay, well, there's this house. You're going to the woods. You know, you might do some fishing. There's some fishing poles back there. Some hunting, whatever. Sort of have some fun. Oops. You know what I just did? I have take away selection set. I need to do add selection set. Again, you know, we see some errors as I'm drawing this. You can imagine when I do this for real, like the amount of mistakes I actually made. Oops, I don't like that. Oops, I did the wrong thing. You just go and try it again, and that's just the way it, way it works, you know. Um, fortunately, sometimes like that, it's just a lot of boring work that has to be redone for you guys on the end, but that is the way these things go. So there we go. I just selected that whole surface. I have a new layer, and I filled it white. So edit, fill white and again I can always come back and adjust how strong it is sort of later on but that's that's a good good place to start all right so the um, the next thing I did was I actually added the shadows then and you'll see why I separated them out here as I do this so I'll go file open and I've again I've already saved from Enscape just the shadows so that was changing the materials to be um, you know turned off that you can render in white um, to get a layer like this um, where did I put that layer? That is the question. All right, I had it tucked away in the wrong file, but here it is. You can see here's what the shadows look like. So I just 
open that JPEG that I made. So I'll select all and copy it and then paste it in above the ceiling layer here. Now in this case, should be able to come in and um, scale it into place um, right there. And of course I have to mirror it. So I'm gonna image, uh, sorry, edit, transform, flip horizontally. I say mirror, you know, I'm an architect. I'd use CAD too much. We can use, we say mirror when we do those things. So anyway, here it is. So now here's the trick with the shadows and how it works. So I'm gonna to go to the blending mode here and change it to multiply. Um, and oops, I had it, did I mirror it already? Oops, sorry about that. There we go, that's the right way. Um, there we go, multiply, there we go. And I can see it, so if I, it's scaled correctly because I scaled it left to right, but if I just need to sort of adjust it into place, we can see it with multiply does it turns off all the white areas. So um, you can see right through it. And, um, but the black areas still see as shaded. So it really works nicely. You know, so, so if I zoom back out just to, you know, if I turn off that shadow layer, there's what it looks like off and there's what it looks like on. You can see it sort of added some shadows. Now I could have just rendered it like this, but the reason why I've done this is because I'm going to control this layer and actually I always like a little trick of actually changing the shadow colors ever so slightly. Um, I could change the strength of them and even the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add an adjustment to this. And you could do it straight up under the image, or you can do it in the layers. Uh, in this case, I think I'll do it in the um, the adjustments in the layer. So, so I'll come here, I'll get open my adjustments, and I'll do hue saturation. And one of the things I want to do is I only want to adjust this layer. So I'm going to hit this little button here. So this adjustment only affects this layer too, which I should should rename shadows. And again, um, I'm going to hit colorize because what I need to do is, oops, just click there. So you can see when I hit colorize, it starts to change the color of that. And I actually wanna make it sort of blues because you make it blues, it sort of, shadows feel blue when there's lots of yellow light, which we know is true from the sun. And also the image that I'm working with has a very yellow glow to it. So I really only changed the, the color slightly again. I um, use these numbers. I experimented with that, but there we go. That's what I use. And then I apply, I apply it there. So a reason for separating shadows is basically so I can turn them from pure black like this. Oh, it's sort of boring. That's what everyone does to blue, which ultimately will go and enhance against the yellows that will be in this image. So let me go ahead and change this layer name to shadows. So I don't forget that. All right. Okay, and then what I did for this drawing is I actually added the lines of the house to this um, because I wanted to make it feel like a drawing, so why not have some lines? Um, and what I ended up using for this project, I actually ended up using um, the SketchUp lines originally, I believe. So I have that all the way here. So I'm just gonna take that base that I had started with, move this in here. Um, I might have to redo, um, the scale because I didn't get it perfect and I forgot I did use it. I also get rid of these gray zones, which I don't need. So I'm just going to select that area here and just delete that off the page. Select the area on the other side that has some gray in it, delete it off the page. And just like shadows, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the blending mode to multiply so that um, we, we turns all the white off and we just get the black lines. So now we can see I am going to have to sort of readjust it and put it into place here. Um, and probably rescale it a little bit because now I do need it to be perfect for this step. And what I did in the real world is I actually tried to use just endscape lines and I didn't like the endscape lines um, as much. So um, they weren't, they were kind of thicker and not, um, uh, sort of as crisp. So I decided to go back to the SketchUp work which is perfectly fine, or I could get a little more detail. It might take me some time here to sort of sort of perfectly scale this into place. So now I have the lines in place. You can see just a subtle effect if I turn that layer off and on. 
very subtly, perhaps on YouTube, especially if you're watching your phone, you might not see it, but it's an important detail. And I know for a fact, we'll actually enhance these lines through various tricks in the end, but this is a good place to start now. It's very often that I'll have line shadows and the materials, uh, which I'll call this materials on my layer list. Um, so we can see that separate, so I can control each individually. And again, I will adjust all of these layers as we sort of go through, but that's the basic basis of the house. Um, now, I did want to draw, I want to enhance this building in many other ways. So throughout the process, I actually did lots of different things. Again, I jumped around when I did this in, the, in, in real life. I did a lot of the background and then sort of composed it back and forth in comparison. But let me show you um, just sort of those things. I'll stick to, to the building right now and show the various changes I made to it. Um, one of the one of the things I actually did is I completely I almost replaced this wood entirely with some wood drawn in Illustrator again just for, for effect. And so what I would have to do is I'd have to jump back into Illustrator over here and start doing some work in Illustrator. Now for a few of these Illustrator steps, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Otherwise, it would take a very much time. Uh, to do. But what I've done is I actually have built a lot of different materials like wood, stone, trees, leaves, um, all these things as separate Illustrator files. I keep them off to the side and then when I need to use them, I just copy, paste them into the, the image I need to use, slide them into graphic style like this. So slide that up there, delete it out. And then what I can do is when I go and make a new layer in Illustrator, I can just draw out that basic shape that I need and I, I'll have the wood ready to go. Now I know there's a lot of holes here um, and I will show you all the settings I have, but rather than create each setting step by step, um, you know, the nice thing about creating it this way is that um, there's a lot there and I don't have it memorized. Um, and so it's a tr it was a trial and error when I made it. Um, and I can always adjust things too once it's there, but this is a good way to work. Make it once you can you can reuse it. So so I made the graphic style. I can apply it to this shape here, and this was just to sort of make this custom texture that I'm going to apply into Photoshop. But again, just so you know, I do I have a video on it. Please go and check out that video. But it basically started with this light brown wood or. You can make it whatever color you want. That's perfectly solid. Then I sort of darkened up the color a bit and I applied these um, uh, effects to it. So I did a scribble here so we can see the settings if you want to see. I should, uh, if, I, if I toggle on and off, you can see that's just the wood, sort of the subtle wood grain is what this is making. Um, so that's scribble. I did stained glass. That breaks it up into making it look a little bit dot, dotted like this. So you can see how it looks on the preview there. You can see the numbers if you want to copy them exactly. And then I did cut out um, on top of that. That just sort of breaks apart the stained glass lines and makes it into this shape as, as you see it there. And then I just did uh, multiply uh, and opacity to sort of fade it back. I essentially did the same thing with a very similar color, but I changed the color slightly. So these settings are pretty similar to that. That just means some dark green spots and some light green spots. Those are overall naughtiness of it. Um, I shouldn't maybe use the word grain per se, because actually the grain itself, these long, these sort of harder dark lines, that was actually using this darker color here. And the only thing here is the scribbles themselves. Uh, they're set pretty skinny. That's the difference here to sort of really get the grain definition of that wood. And, um, and that's what I did here. So that's actually uh, how I started this. Um, we can see it sticking out over the edge edges. Um, that's because a scribble I had going over the edges just to make sure it got far enough away. And um, I can crop all that up in Photoshop. It's just to get a basic texture. In fact, I didn't even have to make it arguably. I, I think I did draw it this way, but I could have made the rectangle as big as I want um, just to make sure it fits because I'm going to have to scale it into um, Photoshop anyway and trim away what I don't need. But I'll just, I can just copy this object, do control C to copy come over to my Photoshop. Now I'm going to, I'm essentially enhancing my materials. So I'm going to put it right above my material layer. I want it to be under the shadows because I want it to affect my shadow. So I'll do control V for paste, say, okay. We can see it sort of comes in usually always small like this. And I, again, I can make it bigger than I need um, for now because I know I'm going to have to trim some stuff away anyway. So I'll set it up like this. 
and I'll just come in. In this case, I'll use, I will use my polygon lasso tool. Um, let me change the layer name to siding. I'll come in and I'll just select the area that I want it to be in, which is, you know, following this area here. One downside of the polygon lasso tool, it can be a bit slow sometimes. Now again, I'm gonna I'm gonna select the area I want it to be in, and then um, I will inverse the selection to delete the part I don't want. So I'd select inverse is up here, control shift I, and then I'll just hit delete and uh, and there we go. Now, so there we go. One one of the things you'll notice is actually I changed the colors quite a bit on it from the original uh, Illustrator material, but that's the great thing about Photoshop. So I'll just adjust those colors here. And um, actually the other thing too is I wanna see some of the original wood behind it. So let's give it a little bit of opacity. We'll, we'll put the opacity down a little, probably around 75, give or take, just so we can see a little bit of this. Now, in this case, I probably when I made this adjustment, again, I know I just, I, I'm gonna not do it in the layers. I could do it through layer ones, but I often like to work over here just so I don't get too many layers. I know I just sort of want to match a good color. Certainly this is way too saturated, so I'm going to turn the saturation way down, and I think it's too too dark, so, I mean too light, so I'll turn the saturation up, and I basically just change these things. Again, since um, if I do it this way, there's no way to reference what I had done before, but, um, you know, you get whatever color you want it to look look like. In fact, maybe I'll actually bring the color a little bit more towards red as well. Um, um, so somewhere around there is probably pretty good. So we'll say OK. We'll get that set. And actually, if I want to make some changes here, I can. I mean, it matches pretty well. I think I probably made the change um, in in here when I did it last time. What I did is I probably just took this area and I copied it. I'll so select this area and copy it over. It's obviously way more than it needs to be. So I'll make sure it stands outside of this. And I probably just did like control T and shrunk it down to make it look like it's skinnier. I'll hold shift on the keyboard. Verticals in perspective hold vertically, but I'm gonna want the texture to look a little more dense because it's at an angle. So, you know, I just gave it a good guess like that. And then again, what I did in, in this area is it, well, I'll do it slightly differently. I'll trim out, yeah, come on, trim out um, the parts that I don't want zooming in just so I can see the edge of this material here. You know, I don't mind it being painfully slow when I'm drawing for myself. It's usually a point of thinking about what my next steps are, but when I'm trying to sort of work on a video, it's like, ooh, this feels real slow, doesn't it? I'll come, come in here and select it, select the area I don't need. So I apologize about that. It does happen in in real life, though. And unfortunately, you can't easily zoom out um, when you have the polygon lasso tool on. Yet I need to be zoomed in fairly closely so I can get fairly accurate selection set there. And I'll delete that there. Woohoo! All right. So so there's just an enhancement. Wood. Again, it's subtle. There's it off. It looks like super real, you know, when I have the wood just from from the from the rendering engine in there. It looks still a lot like wood, but it just has this softness, and this interest in this texture that um, that will begin to make this feel like a drawing and have fully controlled, you know, because I can change the color as I need and, and whatnot. Even though I ended up not changing the color a lot, um, I could have changed it to whatever I wanted it to be. Now, one of the things I also like to do is, okay, well, this wood looks already better, but it's still a bit flat, and there's several layers of shadowing and highlighting that I'll, I'll sort of eventually get on here. Um, but one of the things I did early on is I actually just duplicated this. You don't necessarily have to duplicate the layer. It's just for this step, I like to have a second copy in case they mess up. I can always go back to this original copy. And so so I have this copy here. Um, I think I can change if I if I did something like adjustments to the hue and saturation a little bit, um, I can sort of get a more subtlety in, in colors perhaps as needed. If you want to take that approach, I want it to be a little more saturated, but there we go. So maybe something like that, that'll be good. Um, but 
that was just a small change of just playing with the subtleties of the color. And I always do that back and forth and back and forth. Um, but what we really want to look at is using color dodge and burn and things like that to sort of just provide an extra depth of shadows. And that's probably too big of a paintbrush um, to be using for this step. But if I come here on this layer and we have the burn tool on, you can see I just sort of maybe darking up the edges. What I what I ended up doing for the final image is coming down to this corner and just making it a little bit darker, just sort of freehanding it. It's very subtle. You know, the more I go over it, the darker it is. Some spots you might get a little darker um, like this. Just give, give some subtlety there. So um, that's the burn tool. And then if I go to something like the dodge tool, again, that paintbrush seems a little big. It's no, no perfect answer. I sort of did the opposite corner up in here. You know, something like that and just again eyeballing it up. I'm just using my mouse, no stylus or anything like that. So simple shapes, pretty good to use and uh, give that corner a good go. And you know it just brings a little more life into that. Again as we start to sort of enhance this drawing as a full drawing it'll sort of all come together a little bit better. So there we go. I did that. In the uh, same vein of thinking, I actually did the same thing for the other materials on the house. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the materials layer down here as well. Um, right click, duplicate layer, and I'm going to just stick with um, this uh, dodge tool and just brighten up some of these bright spots. Because in the final image, again, I probably did this a lot later in the work, but there's like sunlight coming down from this side. So I really wanted to enhance that. So I just clicked and I'm just sort of going over and you can see as I as I click on these parts of the buildings, the white spots are getting brighter for me. And um, it's just gonna enhance that lighting quality later on. So it's easy to, to, to do now once I solve the problem. But again, I probably did much later. So I just got the corner of this a little bit. I actually sort of, even highlighted this beam uh, a little bit, you know, just play with the lighting, just like that. Some spots get the whole thing, some don't. Um, even this thing, like if the light's coming across, this this side of the chimney flue gets a little whiter than the, the right side, sort of to enhance that 3D quality. So just a little bit of of uh, color dodging to to enhance the lighting later on can be a really good effect. Oh, actually, in, in, in that vein of things, what I actually did too is um, I made the boat darker to sort of, again, pull the light spots over here and darker over here. I thought that green ended up being a bit dark. So you could do that uh, any number of different ways. You can say, I had a boat. Look, these people would probably boat, right? That makes sense there in the woods. I put a little bird on it. You don't have to do that. Um, I don't remember exactly how I darkened it up. I could have made a layer that was... Uh, uh, sort of black and just made transparency or I copied just the boat out and pasted it, pasted it on, which is probably what I'll do here. Um, and then adjusted uh, control U, hue, saturation, however it wants to be done. So we'll come here. I don't need to worry about the bird and the shadow can get a little darker too. And you can see a little bit of boat in there. Um, my guess is that doesn't matter through the window. We'll see. I'll actually play with the windows as we go along anyway. So I'll just copy that boat out, paste that right on this layer. Um, again, if I did control U, it's just, uh, I can go to the darkness and just make it a little darker. Oh, you know, I have to pull above that material layer because it was, um, you know, a duplicate of that layer. So I did control U just to set it. I don't need a little layer control. I can go and adjust it anytime I want. That boat is not terribly important to the drawing. But again, it's just to sort of make this side brighter and this side darker because I know the lighting is going to come from that edge as I'm working along. And then I know one of the things I did in the end, um, again, I probably did this at a, a different point, though, is I sort of controlled all of the building material layers with some levels just to adjust how bright and contrasty the whole image is in there. And that might be something I want to adjust as I go. So I will, I would probably do this as an adjustment tool over here, and I'll go to levels. And I just made some some minor adjustments. I just took that up a little bit. And you can see here, I'm just going to apply it so it just goes to all of these layers down here. Just to subtle adjustments, you know, it's I'm clicking it on and off if you can see that there. You just sit and you try different things until you get it just set right and that's what it takes. That's what Photoshop is good for making sort of adjustments like that. All right, and one of the um, things I did sort of I think probably the last thing I did to the exterior materials. So I actually added a bit more um, 
dynamic color to this wood. And oftentimes when you see wood, you see that the color at the top of the wood is different than the bottom. I think it has to do with weathering, the way water hits it. And so I sort of fake that on there. You know, you're not going to get that from a perfect 3D rendering usually without a lot of work. All I did is I made a new layer um, above the siding and all the layers of that. And actually what I'll do is I'll just uh, control click on this layer to to click these things and so put them in the selection set. I'm going to make sure my foreground is set to black because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to gradient and my gradient tool. I'm going to change it from black to white actually to black to transparent. Right? Um, and I'm just going to come down and draw a line down through. Oops, I have radial set. That was from a different project. Let me go back to to regular linear gradient. So I'll do that now. That dark in the top, I don't want it to be darkened. What I actually want to do is I want to go to my blending mode and say saturation. So what I've, what I've done is the black has, has no saturation in it. So I've taken all the saturated color out of the top and put it more towards the brown towards the bottom because that's oftentimes how wood pattern um, goes. And actually I'll just, I'm going to adjust the transparency a little bit. Um, about 85 probably just to give a little color in that top zone there. Again, it just all goes into sort of saying really simply how might this look in the end uh, like if it were real wood and sort of being stylized, highlighting those shadows. It's all controlled, easy stuff in Photoshop um, to do, but it does take that level of work and all these materials really just get to, to rendering that siding material there. So actually, I think I did one more thing to the mirror. Uh, materials. So I'm, I made another highlighting of the, of the wood area. Um, I actually did this above the controlling of all the, the colors. Uh, you could probably do it below. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna, just going to call it highlighting, something like that. And I'm going to set my uh, color to sort of a brown, orangey brownish color. Uh, you can always play with this, you know, maybe something like that. Keep my, my background color as white in this case. And I'm going to control click on my siding again because this is really the, the highlighting I'm doing. I'm going to go back to gradient and in this case I will go to to, to circular and sort of put um, a drawing on over like this and what I'll do is I'll change my blending mode to something like linear light just so we can really get that pop of color. It's way too strong but I'll I'll sort of tone this way down. Um, and opacity just again to get sort of some more color out there. It's just just a way that's probably too strong actually even there. Just very subtly just get a little pop of color change across left left to right um, and and give this depth and, and sort of interest to that wood color. Again I try different things. Um, you can do what you want. I'll often not do this directly in order because I was like oh you know what it feels like it should be more brown so so I add that in just as needed just like that. And I guess I could arguably do the same for the other side. Let me make a new layer, highlighting two or something. Highlighting two. Again, I can select this whole siding layer um, and come to gradient. Mine's hidden in a way. Um, do something like that, perhaps. Go back to linear light tone this way down and you know, maybe even tone down more than the other one even if it spreads over here I think that's fine too or if I don't if you don't like it just come through and delete the part that sort of bled onto the other wall right away and so again it's just sort of subtlety of colors darks browns saturated desaturated you got all these things sort of going on as wood really would have in real life you know it doesn't take long to fake it in Photoshop once I sort of finished the exterior stuff, I, I did some things to the interior, var various things. Uh, one of the things I did is um, I added the glow of this little wood stove to, to assume it was like in a fire. And I actually I think I did this above the line layer. So I'm going to go to lines, make a new layer above this, call it fire. And I, I think the way I did it is I basically came over and drew a circle or an oval right around here. I'm going to press ALT on my keyboard to draw from the center. You know, I did some 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 shape like that. Um, and then I feathered it. I don't know how many pixels I made it, so I might have to do it a couple times. So if I go feather, I'm going to try 100 and see what happens. Um, and then I'll select like a very light yellow, orangey color, like way up, pretty, pretty bright up here. 
um, and edit fill that with the feather. Um, select that the foreground color. And you can see some sort of glows. It might be a little bit bigger than I want, but you know, I could always scale it as need to, and it's probably a bit bright too, so I'll tone it down. And um, if I were smart, I would might use layer mask to get rid of it because it shouldn't glow on the exterior frames. So I should mask those layers out. That way, if I want to change the color, or change the scaling later on, I could do that without affecting it. But uh, the quicker way, sort of short, more straightforward way to do it now that I have have an answer is just to come and just use like polygon lasso or even rectangle might work because it's pretty straight and just sort of delete some of this framework out, select it, and delete the glow away from there, uh, and do it the same on this one, the vertical, and even arguably this lower one needs it. So that way it looks like it's just on the inside as it is. And you know, I did some pretty subtle things here. I actually made some more fire highlighting. Um, I don't like to draw a lot with my mouse, but I did just sort of take probably pretty close to pure white color, and I took a paintbrush and uh, fairly small, I don't know what the right size is. And I did things like sort of paint the underside, like make these shoes, uh, these boots above the fire would sort of have, have a bright spot on them. Uh, you know, and uh, of course we wanna turn this way down in transparency, but just to give it a bit bright spot, like, oh, these are reflecting light. And you might think of other surfaces as well, like, oh, there's some, some, some light being reflected. So I'll just paint a little white, make it transparent, and it, it can do a bit of enhancing. Very similar to how I sort of brighten these spots up, but I just did it with a, with a different technique. I just painted them on in this case. Now, um, one of the things that I also wanted to do is I wanted to make the outside look a little more realistic, but the people and the objects and the inside, I want to fade those back even more to sort of bring, this is about the architecture, so sort of bring your attention more to the architecture. Um, and so I actually copied the internals out and applied some filters and things to them. So, so I'll sort of do that now. And I, I don't remember, I might have even had some layer mask uh, set up automatically, but I just have to sort of select in between. I don't want to get the frame, so I just have to do little selection sets between, make sure my additional one is on. And um, I don't think I need to get the ceiling in this, um, although I probably, well, getting that post will probably just be just fine. And um, getting that wall, I'll, I'll want to do and get that texture sort of a little more abstracted. So I'll just come down here and then get down in here and I could arguably I could zoom in a little bit to probably get a little more accurate accuracy would take me a little longer to do um, I can see I didn't even do a great job up there I can come back and correct it a little bit um, but you know I'm also going to be putting some filters on this so exact precision is also not going to be necessarily needed. I think in this case, I'll just come way over to, to here and get that in there. So I've selected the areas. I have to go all the way down to my base material layer, which is down here and copy that. And I'm going to come up and actually put this underneath the fire. I'm going to put it above lines in between fire, just paste it right in. The reason for that is I want the fire to still be sitting on top of it. Now, I don't, again, I don't remember, I was going to call this interior. I don't remember what filters I used exactly, um, but I went to filter, filter gallery. Um, oftentimes I'll use noise, which is probably the last time I did that was needed. I'm going to try, I wonder if I, no, that's way too, too intense. Hmm, let me think. I didn't want to take too much time experimenting, so I just went ahead and uh, just tried some things. And I probably used something like uh, Paint Dobbs to start with. Um, so we can see here, here's the settings I did. It sort of softens a lot, and actually just also applied on top of it um, dark strokes to sort of get some, some of these edges. It's not exactly what I used. I might have used some angle strokes as well to, to highlight it. Perhaps I didn't use dark strokes. Um, it doesn't matter in the end, it's whatever you sort of like it to be. We'll say okay, and we can sort of see we start to sort of abstract that a little bit. Actually, it becomes very bright now, so I know exactly what I did was um, I actually made a new layer on top of this. Um, I'm just going to say interior darker. I could have 
Well, I don't know. Yeah, why don't I do this? I'm going to do it a different way. I don't know what I did. I'm going to delete that layer. I apologize. I'll just come in here. And why don't I try, I think I'm going to use an adjustment layer. Um, we'll go to levels over the whole thing. And we'll just, I'll just put this on just for the interior. And we'll just make it a bit darker. Let's see. There we go. We'll make it darker as, as needed. I'm going to ultimately probably have to cut out the stuff back in that image as well. And we'll get there. I probably should have done that already. But I didn't. So it's a bit dark now. There you go. Somewhere around those settings might look pretty good. Um, and actually, I'm also realizing at this point, I do want the shadows to be on in here. I'm sort of losing those. So we have to take the lines in the shadow layer and move them above that layer to start getting those shadows. That also helps it start. So it's making it darker and it sort of brings, brings out the fire uh, uh, again. And so we can see it sort of starts to abstract this. Again, use whatever abstractions you want, but that's basically how I came, came up to that conclusion. Now I know in the um, future, I'm gonna to wanna to see straight through this. And since I made that one layer of interior darker, I can really get a sense of um, where that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete those. And there are several layers here. So I'm gonna to have to delete it out of all the layers. So when I put my background image, I can see straight through it. But I'm gonna use my magic wand tool. I think I'll have sample all layers and I'll have continuous off, I think, um, in this case. And it, so if I select that one color, um, it's going to be pretty much the same color, so it picks it up well. I could change the tolerance, but we can see it gets some other areas I don't need um, in that. Um, we'll see how it goes. Sometimes I have to change the numbers. One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this parts I know. Like I can just do negative selection sh set to get rid of that. Um, you know, anything on the ceiling I sort of want to keep. I can go to sort of my polygon lasso with the negative selection set as well. And you know anything that is over on this side, I know I don't want to delete because it's just going to be in this area here. There's probably some stuff down here that I'll be covered up with landscaping, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, but if I go to this interior layer that I created and hit delete, it should turn white. And if we're good, pretty much the only thing we expect it to turn white turns white. I think we're pretty good there. And uh, we're going to have to go to this other material uh, that have the, a layer there and a layer there and we can see sort of it all goes back to white. It looks like maybe there was some um, I should have deselected around her. Let me undo that one step here and I can keep it. You know, I might have deleted a little too much on some other layers, but as long as this layer has it, so I'll do is I'll, I'll make sure that she, this, this person here is deselected all the way. And I could go back a few more steps and um, taking her out, but I don't think it matters too much. You can come in and repaint, but when you zoom out, you don't see much of a difference, and that's that's sort of key. So when I add the background, I'll see right through that as um, as the color that I need it to be. And then I think the last thing I'll just do is, you know what, I think I'll just go and make this interior a little darker, which is nice that I, I kept this, this adjustment in the layers, you know, because I want to fade this back and I can go go and adjust it anytime, but you know, something like that might look good. Whatever you, whatever you like, that's that's all that works. So with that is sort of the house stuff is sort of generally finished. Now it's not completely finished, um, but I need to do some some landscaping. So I'll move on to that because I had tree shadows on top of the building, but I don't have trees in yet. I actually added some reflections of trees and leaves into the window glass, but I don't have that yet, so I can't do those glass reflections, of course, as you see through the background, we need to do that as well. So um, that's what we'll start working on now. Now as I go to start to do the landscaping and other elements, I do want to sort of reiterate, you know, when I did this, I did the foreground, which had some grass and a stone wall, the midground, the building, the, some trees in the midground, foreground, and then the background trees. I did those like back and forth, like I would add layers, make adjustments back and forth and back and forth. I didn't sort of do them in this order, but, but I'll start with just sort of doing the very foreground now, which had this this grass hill. And actually I've opened up a photograph. As I was doing this project, I was like really struggling to get this grass in all honesty. It took me, I tried different things and I was actually walking around my canvas like, oh wait, here's a grass hill. Let me go go and grab this and see see what I could do. And so I don't remember exactly what part I grabbed now, but I had this, I see a little hill here. So maybe I'll start 
by sort of copying this little ridge here um, and creating this little ridge in my drawing. And I'll select that and I'll copy it. And again, go walking around, taking photographs. I have photographs of grass, sky, things that I might use in images. If not, you can maybe find something on Google. Um, and I'll just come in here and I'll actually make a new, I'm going to come down. Um, uh, actually, I guess it's in the foreground so I can come up to above house. I'm going to make a new, new folder here, call it grass. Um, cause I'm going to do a few steps to it. So I'll, I'll paste this in. And again, it became kind of sketchy. So the fact that it's small doesn't much matter. Um, and I can paste it down below my edge. It doesn't, doesn't, again, it doesn't matter that, um, I might scale it a proportionally even. We'll see. We'll see how how it goes. I might need to scale it proportionally. I know if this is my main image, at least the start. I know it was pretty low on one side. I don't. Know, I might have even rotated it. Or you know what? I probably did. Let's see. What did I do? Probably. Let's let's put this back into proportion, um, and move that down there. Yeah, that that's looking good. Actually, that's not too bad. Um, that might have been pretty close to what I did. You know what? I'm going to set this for now. Um, and I can always come back and adjust it. There's, there's definitely things that I did to it. But I think the other thing I need to do sort of semi-simultaneously, I have to work on the stone wall a little bit. Now, the, the stone wall I created here was done, drawn completely in Illustrator. So I'm going to have to jump over to, uh, to my Illustrator file here. And I will make a new layer and call it wall or stone wall. Um, now I had lots of sub layers for this and I'll, I'll walk you through most of these steps. Um, but again, I have done a stone texture before, so we'll start there. I'll start with the base texture. So I'm going to just make a sub layer here, call it stones. And I got to, I'm going to go quickly grab, uh, my standard stone. So I went ahead and just pasted in a sample stone wall that I made previously. I'll show a link in the description. Um, um, of how to make this specifically because again it's like the wood siding I already have pre-built I use stone all the time but if I were to select this and I made it a graphic style as well so it comes in as a graphic style when I go to appearance you can see there's actually a lot of layers here just again to quickly review I have a base layer that's a that's a, it's a just a standard gray there's nothing to it um, in this case I actually I think I brought in a stone texture um, even and um, just made it very opaque just to give it a little bit of texture. Here um, I have a gray. We can see I have I have stained glass sponge and cracular and I've multiplied it. That's a, just add texture. Like I often use stained grass and then some other filters beyond that to give this this broad texture to things. It's a very common technique we have. So we see we have it here at 50%. We can see it basically have a very same set. I have stained glass again. I've used a different filter. Um, and I changed the opacity is a little bit darker to again to give a bunch of effects. And we'll look at we can I can turn these on and off to look at each individual layer. And again, I did it a third time, right? Di stained glass, different filters to give it a different set of texture to really create just richness of what looks like stone texture there. And then um, again, um, not sure. Film grain, I think, just gives it, so all the stained glass gives it big set of texture. The film grain gives it the little little set of texture there and uh, on there again with different settings. So if we look at this sort of um, one by one, let me, I'm going to do this really quick. I'm just going to pause the video for a second. So the reason why I pause is because every time I turn these off, it had to re-render and you'll see it render back up. But just again, here is the base. It's just a standard gray. Then I put on, all I did is I found on Google a stone texture and put it in and made it a swatch and put it in as a layer and made it opaque. Um, and then we can see what these other textures do. You can see just adds that little bit of texture to it. So it starts to get it more and more custom, more and more slightly looking like it's hand drawn. Um, also just sort of having that control. And then I add another layer just very subtly. This will come on after, as it's rendered. See, so, you now you can start to see different spots. It's changing the color. It's making it darker like I wanted to. I knew this was going to be fairly dark. Although like before, I'll do a lot of lighting tricks on top of the material once I'm done. Again, you add... Um, there's, there's no stroke there, so I don't need to turn that on. And then just add, adding the, the lines. This is actually, if you look at the link that I have, I use as just the standard, um, textures in, in, um, 
right from Illustrator to get these stonework joint like looks. I did it at different scales to get this really big texture thing here. Again, I'll there's a whole video I'll point you towards to how to do that. But once it's a graphic style and once it's in there, I can delete it and then I can draw the shape that I really need to. Now I'll use layers in Photoshop to have control. So what I really need to do is a pretty straight line. So I'm just going to draw a big rectangle across my page here and uh, it's going to fill in with this top layer. And I actually had it come up because I'm set down this knoll, so this stone wall is in front of us, so it comes up the building edge just a little bit. I pretty much came up underneath that bottom framing element somewhere around there, and I set it here. I should probably move my layers around because in theory, um, oh, I'm, I just drew that on the wrong layer. That's why. Okay, see, I, as I said, I make mistakes. Let me lock that layer that's called wood and put that on the stone layer here. So once I have the box drawn and I have the graphic style already pasted it in, I'll click it and I'll take a second to render here. We'll see. And then I'll have this big stone wall. Again, in, in Photoshop, I'll have the grass knoll in front of the stone wall. So for now, it can just be bigger than it needs to be. I just need to make sure that top edge is set where I want to go. Oof, there we go. There we go. And again, the, some of this extra edging I can I can delete that in Photoshop as needed, all this extra stuff, just like I had to delete some of that stuff in wood. That's the nice thing about working between Illustrator and Photoshop. You can get some of these great textures uh, that that look really good, but if it's often easier because when you have to do perspective and things, you have to make them bigger. And it you just go, you delete it in Photoshop, make final adjustments there. Now, before I bring this into Photoshop, I know what I ended up doing, again, through trial and error, is I added a little bit more shadow texture in Illustrator. I did lighting work in um, in Photoshop as well, which I'll get to in a moment or two when I, when I get there. But I, I made a new layer and called it, like, shadows for the stone here. And what I did is I basically just drew out that same shape. I'm going to put a, top, a heading, a sort of top course on this as well. And I, I filled it black like this, and I went to Effects stylize scribble and I think I used a pretty thin scribble um, spacing was pretty thin but the variation was a lot you know something like this um, and then I feathered it effects Style, stylized feather and gave it like about 35% feather. You can see it very, makes it very subtle there. Um, and if I turn off the layer, um, oops, let me grab this thing here. There we go. Turn off the layer just to see subtlety to it. Let me, let me pull this up to see what it looks like. I might have, I might have made the feather too big here. Let me, let me try. I pull it up so I can see and go back to appearances and can come back to feather. Um, Oh, it's because I did three. I meant to do 0.35, not 3.5. Let's do preview. Let's move it up. That's still too too big. Let's try. Oh, yeah, I think I meant to do 0.03. I'll try 0.03. Not three inches way off there. Yeah, so there we go. That's what I'm looking for. So you get these little shadow marks sort of going across. Um, I can pull the, that back down. To, to sort of the wall. See, it just adds a little bit of detail. Again, I think maybe I added some opacity, like 50% if I thought it was too strong, just to, to sort of subtly sort of tie that in. And um, then we have this. So what I can do is I can sort of select these. I can, can co copy this, this stone wall uh, object. I can come over to my Photoshop file. Let me make a new group over here. Call it stone wall. And paste these pixels in. That's just the one layer. Um, that's okay. I can, can fix that as needed. Again, this is up up in here. Let's paste that across. That's just those shadows. Um, come back to Illustrator. I could have actually added those shadows to the same. Uh, I could have added another fill and just done it right there. Then I wouldn't have had to copy it twice, but so be it. That's the way it is. I actually had it locked. That was the other reason why I didn't copy through, but it's okay. I can just add this layer. Now, as I paste this layer in, um, come on, paste. Did I not copy it? I was just thinking, okay. Just thinking. I guess this is a big layer here. 
Hopefully I didn't crash it. I always pause the video and come back as needed. Here we go. It's coming. It's thinking. It's thinking. There we go. Pixels. Okay. I sort of pacing these in in reverse order, but I can fix that. Again, the stone wall, the location um, wasn't, it was just sort of an estimate of a location. It doesn't much matter. So I'm just making sure it sort of fits into place. A lot of the Illustrator work in this particular file, you know, you end, end up moving things around. You'll see that, especially when we get to the trees and stuff. So really just looking for the top edge of the main part of the stone wall to sort of be above. I can set set the scale here. Above that bottom frame line just a little bit, just like that to block out that bottom edge. Again, what I really need to do um, here is I have to pull layer four, which is the, that extra shadow layer above layer five. And I'm going to drop both of these into my stone folder because it sort of came out there. Um, again, if it crosses over the sides, doesn't matter. Um, but um, I do want to go to my layer five and clean up this extra work that came through from my settings that I need to do. And I can get a little bit of that stone because I am going to put a topper stone on this still. So I'll just delete that off to make a nice clean edge. Sort of start to get that stone edge there. And then just like um, just like the house, what I did is I duplicated some of these layers. I'm going to call it stone wall or just stone so I know what it is. And this is some shadows. Here, what I did is I, I took the stone wall, I duplicated the layer just like before, and I can come in and start going to color dodge and color burn and uh, sponge tool and all those things and just sort of add, uh, you know, just sort of, oh, you know, there's some dark shadows here. Some of it was done after the trees might be on there. But even so, it's like I need, I know there's some dark spots. There's maybe these stones stick out. But most importantly, I need a sort of highlight, just as I highlighted this and brighter and more orangey, I'm going to need to do the same thing to this wall. So I could do it with other layers. I mean, I did it several ways for that, for, for these walls. Um, or I can come down and use the sponge tool with my saturation mode set up there to sort of brighten it up a little bit. I can go to... Um, my dodge tool, again, that's going to make it sort of brighter on this edge and darker on, on the other edge. The reason why I do like to, to sort of do it on a separate layer is like, obviously this is appearing a bit too yellow right now. And so I could, I could probably undo it. Probably should have done sponge after brightening, after doing dodge. So let me, let me dodge this first over here a little bit more and uh, something like that. And I can fade it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Gonna, I think I'll burn, you know, this edge again. This is the darker side of the drawing, so a little more burning over, over on that edge works. Um, and um, I can try, you know, I might try to just make a new layer. I don't remember exactly what I did, but if I create a new layer, I do that same thing I did on the house where I came to sort of a, a brownish color, and I put a radial gradient over on the one side over here, something like that. And then I can do sort of like a linear light, boom, pop it, like saturate a bit. Of course, turn turn the, the, the opacity way down, but just sort of really brighten that edge, make it more saturated and make it darker and less saturated over on that side, just like the rest of my drawing is going to be. Oops, I don't know what I did there. I just select, selected something. And again, you can go and adjust this as needed. Um, and I could go back and forth again, right? So I'm going to come up back to my grass layer here, and I'm going to sort of work on the the uh, the size that I want this to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and take this guy and bring him pretty close up to the top of the wall on one side. And in fact, probably, you know, this is actually not too bad. I feel like I trimmed down the edge. I mean, I liked it. Like, that's why I took the photograph because I wanted this ridge. You know, I'm just going to go and use it. It's the easy thing to do. But if I wanted to sort of create this a different shape, I could still have a different selection shape and make this hill as much as I wanted to. But I think, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna leave it like this and just see how it goes. Now, there, there are several things I did to this um, in this layer in the end. One of the things I did is I completely changed the color. Um, and if I were smart, I'd do it through the adjustment tool so that I can always change it. Because I, I went sort of dramatic 
on it. And again, I did this back and forth. I actually made the grass really much more blue than it really is. Again, the same reason why I did the shadows is because all of this is going to become very yellow and orangey. And so setting off that subtle contrast between it really makes it look like this is in shade and shadow and that this is really bright and, and lively. And so that was key. Again, did I do it without having the yellow there? No, at some level I did. But I know I did it now, so why don't I go ahead and start making that adjustment? Um, so let me come up to my adjustments. Just closed here and go to hue saturation. Um, I might, yeah, let me put it here. Um, let's see. I'm just thinking. I know, I know. I'm going to add more things to this. You can, we can see. I'm going to have to sort of set it to just the layer, so it's just the grass. So I might have to do it to the. Um, well, I might have to do it a couple times. We'll we'll see what happens. But I know again, I made it pretty blue, and I made I didn't and I took out a lot of the saturation. And you can see the dark. It was a sort of dark day when I took the photograph, so some sort of brightness contrast probably works pretty well. But I I pretty much said it like pretty. I took out a lot of saturation. I made it pretty close to blue somewhere around there. I can always change it as needed, but it was some something like that. And then, then what I did is I sort of made a new layer on top and because right now this edge is hard. Um, and so what I did is I come in and I go to something like my clone stamp tool and I come, if you don't have it set, you want your legacy brushes. So um, I'm going to click on the legacy brushes. Mine are already loaded, so it's asking me to restore them, but you're going to have to do that. And when you do that, if you scroll down far enough, you can see you get a little grass tool. I use it all the time, so you can see mine's the, oh, hey, this is a recent brush you used. Um, so I almost always have it set here. So there's a couple different grasses. So you select that. You can select the size. And if I hit ALT to select my target, I'll just do it up here. You can see you get this little grass edge like that. And what I'm going to do is I'll just zoom in to my edge here and do it right on the edge here just so, so it doesn't become the straight wall. So it, begins to have the texture of how grass might look. And, and you know what I did in this image? I really sort of went crazy. I mean, I did do some big ones sometimes. I sort of came way up and, uh, you know, it's not maybe the best maintained wall, uh, sorry, mowing job. It's sort of in nature, so it's perfectly fine. Might need to reset your your target every once in a while. So just press ALT and set it somewhere else and sort of paint in this grass edge is a great effect even I am doing it against a, a stone wall that I rendered in Illustrator but I do this all the time if I have a building edge right up onto grass I'll use this tool so it really sets it down into the grass plane it's a really really great one and I know I've shown it in many other videos if you've watched other ones but it's such a, an important tool so we'll go ahead and do that and actually you know what another thing I'm going to do I'm going to do the same thing I did to um um, to all the layers. I might even come in, I might select this this guy here and maybe I'll give him some shadowing so I can go to like my color burn tool. Maybe I'll go to a fairly decent sized brush. We'll see what happens. I, I think like, like darkening up corners is always nice of a drawing. So I might just start to sort of darken that up over there. You know, maybe there's a little in, imperfections in this hill. Just paint them on just by making them slightly darker, just like that. Um, and we start to get that edge there. I can even, if I if it maybe change my paintbrush size a little bit, I can have enhanced little little lines in here just to make it a little less perfect, a little bit more like a uh, a drawing. It can can really add to it. In fact, I'm gonna again to sort of darken up the edges. It's always always nice to do. And so using this tool to just get this grass edge darker will help the eye focus towards the building later on. I need to sort of pull this out a little bit, I think, that way, like that. But, you know, there's no science to it. It's just some basic rules as you go along. Um, something like that. That's good. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll end there. And, you know, one of the things I think I did, I got to, you know what I did as well here? Um, I also made a new layer. I said, hey, this is going to be like frosty morning thing, right? The fire's on and whatnot. So I made a new layer did frost and I, I think I probably made my foreground color white and I'm not exactly sure what paintbrush I used but I'm gonna use some speckly maybe chalk why not why don't I try chalk and see how it goes um, and uh, let's see is that painting anything on there no why don't I see anything Oh, because I don't have paintbrush selected. I had 
yeah, I want to do paintbrush. I was on a uh, color dodge there, I think. So let me go and try try to read this again. Still make I make mistakes too, and you're you're hardly seeing any of them in this video. Um, you know, any of these, you know, I think would work. Like if I try any speckly one like this, um, we'll give it a try and see what happens. That's too small. So I'll undo that, you know, trial and error sometimes. Nice. There we go. Yeah, something like this. So I just I sort of went across to like this and in, in little zones across to sort of paint. It's it's too dark right now. What I'll I'll do is I'll come back and you know use some transparency and blending modes and whatnot on it. But this will be sort of the, an attempt at creating frost. I can also sort of highlight some nulls, arguably, if I wanted to, by making some spots brighter where I think they might catch some light a little more, which is obviously not going to be in the shadow area. Um, so something like this, and I'll come in and just take the opacity down pretty far, right? It's just these. It's just thinking about these little things like that. Here's like on and off, very subtle, but just adds a little detail. Like, oh yeah, there's light coming from here, right? So it's all thinking about where the lighting is ultimately coming from. Adding like there's probably dew on the ground that's going to create these certain highlight areas. It's enhancing the dark corners, which is just generally good for drawings and just sort of makes it come alive. Um, and those are those fun little things you can do in Photoshop to really make the drawing your own. And basically, the next thing. I think I'll do is finish off the stone wall by adding its topper. Again, I actually started probably in Illustrator, although, you know, I like using Illustrator. Um, um, I don't know that you necessarily have to for this step, but I'm going to do it that way anyway. Let's make a new layer. I'll call it top. I'll do, of course, similar work. And um, yeah, because I could do it, you know, because I know what I did and I'm just thinking I could have maybe simplified it. Uh, in there, but what I just I just took a rectangle, drew it right on top of this. Again, I, I, it's, it's going to be a different layer, so I can really place it anywhere I want. In fact, I'll be able to scale it as I need to as well. And I just changed uh, the foreground to actually just a gradient. Um, that's not the gradient I used. Uh, let me see. Let me think about this. Go to gradient. Um, actually, I had to go in and just see what the colors are I used just to save myself some time. And, and there we go. So you can see it's sort of a light brown, a darker greenish gray, and even a darker one. Just set across. Again, that's all about the lighting coming across. I could have probably set it all as gray and then just done the same sort of color dodge and burn tricks right in, in Illustrator. I didn't. Um, part of the reason is one thing I need to do to make this stone is I just added a little bit of texture, texture to it. Um, so I went to Effects. Um, and I went to um, Film Grain, which is under Artistic, I believe. Film Grain, yep, Film Grain, and then um, set it to some having some texture like that, and said OK, right? And I and um, I'll just copy this object in now and come over to my Photoshop file. Make sure I'm under my stone wall here. Um, I can put it on top. I want to put it on top of everything. Just paste it in. And again, I can scale it as needed. Can come off the page. In this in this case, I might even scale A proportionally um, just to get the thickness of that wall as I want it to be. The, the I cut off the stone pretty much as tall as I want it. So I'm just going to put this edge just ever so slightly above that. Sort of make it a little skinnier as needed set it set it like that so that's my edge and one of the things we are i'm going to add a couple more details to this i'm going to add a shadow line for the edge as if that edge is sticking over that's really going to help a lot so i'm going to call this edge shadow and i will just set my color to black and i will take a regular old paintbrush not too thick that's definitely way too thick um, Something like that, and I'll hit the edge there, and I'll hold shift and put the edge there to add that shadow on. All I'll do is I'll turn down the transparency to where where I think I should want it. You can see that edge of that stone wall starts to stick out a little bit. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come, this is actually my topper. I call it my topper or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to make a, lot, a layer on top of this and call it joints. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a black color and I'm going to make this pretty skinny here like 
way skinny. I don't know what I use, but probably something super thin. I have it set to four. I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to just sort of semi-randomly strike a line straight down like that. So it's like that's a piece of stone and this is a piece of stone. And I'll come across every once in a while and sort of strike that line. I could copy that that other line. If I hold shift, which I didn't do there for some reason, I can draw a straight line straight down, which is what I want to do. And just pick a couple spots to, to pull those across over as you're going along. You can think about the alignment a little bit if you want to, or just sort of take some guesses. Oops, I hold, I click shift a little too soon there. Um, just to add those little joint lines that are a bit strong now. So if you think they're strong, just change the opacity a little bit, pull them straight down to, to wherever you want. And um, that was basically how I made that stone wall for the drawing. Um, yeah, you know, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to change the hue and saturation and brightness of this stone wall, I think, just a bit. So I'm going to do this to the whole layer. Um, so if I come up to this uh, group and come up to adjustments um, and come to, to hue saturation, actually put it down there. That's fine. Let's just gonna drag it up, try to get it above that layer and post it just so it hits this entire group. And I just want to just desaturate it all a bit. It just feels too saturated. And um, I might use some levels as well, maybe darken it just a bit, you know, just to, to pull it in wherever you want to go. And actually what I'm going to do is, because again, this is actually, if this isn't more in shadow, if I just try to bring it over towards, I don't know, the blue color tones, maybe um, pull it down more towards Blue. You know, I'm just trying things. Actually, around, actually, this is more towards cyan. Sort of like that cyan ish look, but it's very saturated, but still brighter over on this edge. But, you know, just pull it into that zone again. I, ultimately, when I go to do that yellow, I think that's the, the reason for that, um, for, for that work to be done there. So, so we'll do that there, and then we'll uh, sort of get started on the trees and all the background. And actually, I think what, that's where I'll start is I'll probably start way in the background here. Now, I know this background took uh, a couple steps, and that's where, where I sort of jumped over to this other file to create this foliage, and I had a, a series of, of different things that I did. I could have done it in the same layer, but at this point I was like, oh, it's getting tough. Let me just focus on this background layer. So I, so I jumped over and then made a new layer, and I actually started with a gradient where I went from sort of a rich orangey color, um, you know, maybe not quite that bright, to a um, sort of more pale orangey color. Somewhere around there, maybe a little more towards yellow, perhaps. Somewhere around there, we'll say okay. And I just did a gradient, uh, linear gradient, so to change this to from the one orange to the other, other orange color, go to linear. And I just drew a line straight down. And actually, I want it the other way around, so let me come back and uh, draw it that way. Um, and then what I did is I think I used the leaf brush and made I made a new layer, probably painted about the same colors. Let me see if I go up to paintbrush. Um, and again, under your legacy brushes, they should be loaded in already if you did those grass edges. Um, you're going to have like a maple leaf, which I've used a few times throughout this drawing. This would be the first time for this video, but I'll, I'll use it again. Scatter, scattered maple leaf here. And I'll set the, I'm just creating this abstract image, um, you know, and I just, yeah, just this might be a bit bright, but we'll see what happens. I just sort of painted this on to create this texture here. It's like this. I don't need to fill it all up, I don't think. I'll try something like this. And then what I'll do is I'll either try some blending modes or hue saturation and sort of blend this into that those background colors. So I don't know if I try some of these, if, if any of these modes might work. I'm just checking them out really quickly. If not, it doesn't, not really quickly doing what I want to do. So maybe it's just uh, hue saturation and I'll set this. Certainly I want to take this down as too bright. I don't know, this could be tricky. There we go, Bright, brightening it up that way actually I think is helping a bit. So, probably could have changed some of my 
oranges. I probably could change the brush to not have so many yellows in it. Feels a bit yellowy. Let me see if I come to, you know, maybe something like that soft light starts to bring the oranges of the background into the colors, just having this this sort of texture color. You know, I could keep working on it, but I know I'll have to bring it into the Photoshop file to keep working on it further. So, so we'll say something like that is good. And then what I did is I actually brought in some real texture of leaves, I think, as well. So I need to go grab that real quick. I think I might try doing this slightly different than I did originally to see how it goes. Anyway, I got an image of some fall leaf colors from online, from Google Images. And I started by, I think I made a seamless texture out of this, which takes some steps to sort of copy and paste and do masks and all these things. But um, in the end, it didn't, I don't know, it got me very far. So I'm just going to select an area of colors and leaves that I like, say something like this, and go edit, um, define pattern, say OK. And I'll come back in here, and make a new layer on top of all of this, and select it all, and go edit, fill, um, uh, foreground to pattern. Change this to the pattern I just made, which is down here. I should have checked the scale. The scale's a little small, actually. Uh, I'm just realizing that. So I think the otherwise, I think it'll work, work fine. So you know what I'm going to try doing? Just a slight tweak to this. Um, I can even grab more, and grab more of this sort of image and copy it. I'm going to come back into here and paste this in. You can see the leaves just feel a bit small for the scale I'm working on. So I'm just gonna, whoop, just gonna scale this up to something I think is sort of more appropriate. And select this layer. Now let me try to um, define this as a new pattern here. And I can select the whole thing and go uh, edit, fill. Should still be on pattern, but I do have to change it to my new pattern here. Boom, and there we go. We got little, little lines there. Um, but I think what in the end, I'm just going to like make this so transparent and add more things on top of it that I don't think it's going to matter much. So you can start to see that it starts to build up the colors that I want, the texture they want. It's all going to be in the background. It'll be okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get really tricky. I'm going to actually duplicate this layer. It's gonna I'm going to offset it just so much. You can see that's going to help sort of um, dissolve some of those lines. And I'm going to come here and maybe try, try like a blending mode, like um, lighten, something like that. Sort of give that texture, pull those colors through and break down some of those lines. Again, I think we still see them a little bit, but I think it'll all be okay in the end. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'm just going to, I'm just going to image, I'll, I'll, I'll take the layers. I'm going to flatten this all down. I could save it and I should save it if I want to keep these layers. But just to, to flatten the image for now, I'm going to just control it all and copy it um, here. And so when I come back to my drawing, I'm going to have to come way down to the bottom of my, my image. I'll keep the white background layer and I paste it in. It sort of all comes in. Um, as as a unit there. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to delete the the rest of this white space from around the building and all those layers too. That's okay. Um, I can sort of see the edges. I just want it to be again bigger than my zone. So I'll go ahead and just scale this up like that. And um, I sort of have the background. And and so what I'll do now is let me come in and, and go back to my building material layers a bit here. And okay, find them in my house layer, I know, start with this lower material layers. There are a couple times in there, but I'll go to my magic wand. Um, in this case, let me go to continuous. Um, so I can select just that shape there. It doesn't select the window or anything like that. And actually there's a little bit, I can sort of see through a little slash of window there. So I want to get that area selected as well. Um, and I'm going to delete this right out of that layer. Now we're not going to see much thing happen because I've got a couple layers. Um, that, that that sort of gets impacted on. So once I delete them from all those couple material layers, now I'm good and I have this texture all behind. It's got leaves, it's got the colors I want. I'll probably still make color adjustments, some branches and things. There's all going to be this mid-ground that goes on top of it, um, but it's a, it's a good place to start. So what will come through here now is um, I probably could have made a group to make the background stuff. So why don't I go start that group and call it background and put this in it 
and what I'll do is I'll come and do a um, I'll I'll start with some levels. I'll I'll add levels to this. There's nothing below it, so I don't need to need to do anything. I think it needs to be lightened a lot though. And oh, that's dark. And I always get confused. Back there we go. There's some light. It's, you know, and you can sort of washed out a bit more. In the end, again, I can come back and play with this as all I want, whenever I want. I can add some contrast to this if I wanted to, sort of bring in some of those those bright spots. I might even come in and um, do the same thing I've done other places and come in and sort of uh, use my dodge tool, maybe get this pretty big and sort of paint some zones of brightness sort of in the middle that are going to capture the eye around the house a little bit. You know, this is all good. There's going to be a lot of things coming up over the top of them. So if there's anything like that. I could have duplicated that layer, so I didn't feel like this is a bit bright there, but I could go back and undo it, but I think it's going to be okay. So you could, I could color dodge some areas. In fact, maybe I will even do that. Some of the edges, again, making the edges of your drawing darker is always a um, good thing to do. So we'll come up to something like this and I can come in here and, oh, I have sponge tool on, not color dodge. It's okay. I can change that. Uh, now, and I'm really dumb because I want the burn tool. It's a third time's a charm. There we go. Now I'm darkening, darkening up these corners a little bit, and I might end up doing that more with the, all the other things that are, and ultimately go on top of this image. But it doesn't help, doesn't hurt to sort of start adding some of those things. Now again, when you start to sort of add these darker edges on, it'll bring your eye towards the house. You can see it's already starting to do that already. And uh, I might add more over here, especially since this is the start, start side of my drawing. So there we go. You can keep playing with it as you will, but it's a, it's a good little technique there. You know, the, um, the background itself self probably still needs a little bit of uh, texture and richness before I even start the sort of trees, the individual trees that I'll draw in Illustrator. And so what I did is I actually just found another image on Google that sort of has fall colors and trees and trunks and sort of things like this. And I just copied this in like this and, and pasted it above this base foliage layer. So I'll paste it in there. And this is going to be very abstracted. So even if I got to like totally, you know, scale this up, uh, whatever the case might be. And if it's a little blurry, it's totally fine in the end. Um, you know, something like this. And just make it pretty transparent. Uh, I might even change the colors, but I can do that again. So I'll try something like 35. You know, so it really sort of pulls it back in and starts to give it this this look here. And actually what I did is I duplicated this layer um, as well. Whoops, not delete. Do not delete layer. I got to put it above that layer. That'll also help. I, well, that's why it had that color. Well, I can always add its own duplicate layer. Okay. And did apply some filters to it. So I'm going to go to filter gallery. Um, you know, something to really make this abstract, like paint daubs, for example. Um, zoom out a little bit. We can see see what's happening here. Might want to make the brush size a lot bigger. Let's see, so sort of you can see how it softens it out and abstracts it a lot. I'll keep the sharpness down. Oops, I, had to, I have two paint dobs in there. That's from last time. Well, you know, if I like it, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Maybe I'll go ahead and add another one, not paint dobs. Well, I could keep it paint dobs. So I'm going to do something like maybe angled strokes right on top of this. Uh, I like to pull my stroke directions in a, one direction. I'm um, going to want my going to be fairly long. I'll pull that straight over. You can see the preview here. You can change sharpness. Again, I probably spent a lot of time playing with all these settings, um, but partially in the interest of time, I'll just say, I'll give me set, let's set that as okay. We'll say that's good enough. Um, and render so, sort of abstracts it a bit. Um, and if it's, you know, I can turn it up the opacity a little bit so it gets a little stronger. Um, but than, than the full realistic one. And I can go ahead and do this. I'm going to try pulling this 
up to the top there and see if it sort of makes it brighter. And it does, yeah. So that's that might be something that I want to do. And, um, you know, there we go. So I got some background trees sort of all set in from from all that stuff. And that's probably good enough for the background. Some of these things might change. They might be partially enhanced as I as I go through. But, uh, but I think we got a setting that sort of has this depth in it. Now we want to control the trees around the house. You know, for that, I uh, basically went into Illustrator, and all those sort of mid-ground to foreground trees were all drawn in Illustrator. So I need to jump back over to my Illustrator file, and I'm just going to pause for a second, and I'm going to go grab, because the trunks of the trees are, are pretty complicated, so I have that already drawn, just like the stone in the wood, and I need to go get my sample. So again, I'm just focused on trunks right now, and I have a, I'll, I'll post a link to the video on how to do tree trunks and branches. Um, it's complicated, and I'll show the quick pieces here. Um, but it is basically I, um, what I did in that video. I tweaked the colors, perhaps, and, and tweaked some settings, as you can view really quickly, um, and then did some Photoshop work and other things. But uh, but that's what it is. So if I go into the appearance, you can actually see all the pieces that go into making this trunk um, and if I turn them all off one by one we can be able to see the components of how this is made. It's all done with stroke right so I basically have a non-straight line when I'll, and when I make the graphic style I just draw a couple non-straight lines and I can compose what um, you know I want to compose. Uh, so I have this here uh, I did warp and roughen in round corners a little bit just to take a long straight line and make it a bit more um, softer but also random in, in that way and then um, we can see I've got this um, layer here that's just a stroke the fill is actually uh, let me show you what I did here I, I, I did cloud render I won't yeah I had a little little glitch there uh, I'm back so anyway for this fill layer I made a Photoshop layer I just used the cloud render tool in Photoshop um, so if I come over to Photoshop, I can show you what I did. Um, see, I think it's actually in my Illustrator textures um, somewhere here, right here. So basically, I just set my foreground color to be, you know, this this color, uh, tannish color, and the background color to be this sort of gray color. And I just did filter, render clouds, and then I saved that image. That's all I did, and I pulled that in, and then made a swatch of that, so I could set the stroke to that swatch. Um, and so that just sort of gets, starts to get a stipply look for leaves. That's what that's what that layer is doing. There. So come back in here. Then I just did a gradient on a stroke to add shading on one side. Again, it's going to be on this side because I know lighting's coming from that side that way. Um, then I added here. I added just this texture. So I basically just got a texture from Google of wood bark and made that a swatch and put that right in there. And then I did the highlighting side so I did this uh, I did a gradient of this sort of warm uh, orange yellow color graded it out that way to sort of get this trunk is rounded in three dimensions there and then um, I just did a little bit of highlighting again on that edge um, we can see the subtle changes there not much and that's how you sort of make a rough trunk again I'll, I'll put a link in the video to show a little more description on that but uh, you make the graphic style and then you can come in and start uh, just drawing the line sort of as you think they should be drawn and again I have the advantage of having it drawn once so I'm going to try to um, uh, you know draw basically what I drew before I know uh, and I, I did when I drew them I drew a bunch of them and I, I didn't really and I moved them around and deleted some in the end you know I did a whole bunch of things to it but just draw some straight lines like this I'm just using the pen tool and I'll, I can render them all at once so I can just draw the line for now um, why don't I just set it to a color that I'll be able to see uh, let's make them silly red for now see what my stroke is set to one okay good yeah so we can see I have a red line there and I'll go ahead and make some others I'm going to want to assume that they pull behind the building. You know, they might have sort of branches that come off of them like that. So I might have one line connected to another line like that. Become a branch. We'll, we'll look at some other branches as we do foreground colors. You know, something like that. Hit P. 
And I could take these, probably should take some of these longer, although I'm going to crop the image, but still it's good because I would, purposely I don't want to see the tops of these trees. And ultimately you'll see some coming through, through the house like that. Crooked one there. Just trying to get a little more dense on this side. Ultimately, there's going to be a big tree in the foreground here, but I'll just sort of draw out those trees. Just again, straight, simple lines like that. I can select them all, go into my graphic style, and I have all these sort of trunks come up. Some of these I'll like pull forward and image arrange, bring to front, you know, and I can actually change the thickness of these. So like if this is just a branch, instead of being so thick, I'll just make it, you know, 20 points or maybe even smaller. Actually, one of the issues is I might have to use scale command because that just did the one layer, not the whole, um, all the settings. But if I shrink this, you can see it all gets, it all gets shrunk when I use uh, the direct select and I can stretch it out and sort of make it skinnier just like that. Again, a lot of these will be behind the building in the final file. But you got trees, again, you make them as you want, you can adjust them as needed. Um, and certainly I spent time adjusting points, adjusting their locations, and so are sort of doing all that good stuff, uh, as well as ultimately changing the colors and things in Photoshop once it was there. So what I'll do now is, um, you know, I'll make sure they're all selected. Oop, panned off to the side here. I'll just control C to copy. And I'll jump over to my Photoshop file. I'll put them in the background, but above this, I have, that, I have the change of the contrast. There. I'll have to make my own for these these chunks here and pull them in. Sort of, again, pull them off to the side perfectly fine. Get them scaled up nice and large. So they extend outside the drawing, something like this. Um, and I know I'm going to crop the top, so that's also perfectly fine and okay. And then we can set it in just like that. Uh, one of the things you want to do, and I'll, and I'll go here and do this, is I want to make sure I see some some trunks through that window. That was the point of doing it. And I think what I ended up doing um, when I did this reel, I was like, okay, well, I have this here, but this one sort of, maybe I want to see this one more. So I went back in the Illustrator file, moved it over, recopied and pasted in. Um, I'm not going to do that now, but you can do that as you want. It can be like, oh, do I like that edge or do I want to move this trunk over? Whatever the case might be. Um, you know, do I want to see see less of this? You can pull it out. So you can adjust the trunks. I could have brought the trunks in one at a time as well to give a little more control over each individual placement as needed. But we got those sort of mid-ground trees in there now. And what I'm going to do is uh, I will just do an adjustment layer um, on this guy, hue saturation. I'll just do it just for the layer below. So I'll hit this button here and probably want to saturate them a bit because they are in the background. Um, also, it'll sort of highlight the, the sort of background leaves a little bit. Um, that might be a little too much, but, you know, whatever begins to work for you. I might actually lighten them up just a tiny bit. Get them in the sense you want. That's the great thing about Photoshop. In Illustrator, I can have a lot of control of the shape in Photoshop, the, the, you know, how they, how they actually look. But, you know, so we'll say that looks pretty good there. Um, and then what we can move on to, there's a couple couple enhancements I made to this actually. One of the things I did is I made sort of uh, like a fogginess, like maybe the clouds were just coming through. So to do that, I just came up above this layer. I made a new layer, called it fog. Oops, I need to do that. I had to change the name to fog. Set my foreground color to white. Um, I basically took this whole area here and went to gradient. Of course, I went to foreground to transparent right there and uh, went to linear and I just don't see which did I get. Nope. I want to do it the other way. I want the fog to be low, like fog is low and sort of, sort of open up like that. And that fog's too too bright, so I'll just come in here and you know set it to about 50% transparency, probably you know somewhere around there, just like that. Sort of fade that up a little bit, even set those trees because I'm gonna have trees forward from these trees as well. But set that in in there like that, and deselect. 
basically the last thing I want to do for this background layer is add some leaves. So, you know, a lot of these leaves of these trees are up in the air, but there's some branches that are going to be covering up some of these trunks, as well as some of this big trunk that's from my background layer. I can get around by just sort of faking by painting on leaves. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come actually under my fog layer. So let's make a new layer, pull this down, call it leaves. And I'm going to do very similar to how I set the background color. So I'm going to have sort of a an orangey color like this for one of my colors and sort of a paler orange color for that. I'll go to my paintbrush, go to my leaf, and I'm going to test this out. So we can see, if we remember last time I had these very bright reds and bright oranges, I want to, I want to change that. I'm going to undo that by coming to my brush settings um, over here and under color dynamics. I'm going to come to color dynamics and say hue jitter. I'm going to turn this way down. I can just test it over here. Actually, sorry, hue jitter is not what I want to do. That's, um, yeah, no, that's what I want to do. I want to turn up my foreground background jitter. There we go, to start getting the colors that I have over here into there. In fact, I can turn that up higher, I believe. I may even be able to do brightness jitter, perhaps. And something like that is not too bad. Yeah, yeah, we can go, we can go with this. Um, so what I'll do is once I have that set pretty good there, I'll come in here and paint, um, you know, just a little bit over these leaves, especially sort of figuring out that trunk, just sort of getting around there, sort of over the, some of these trunks. If I don't like a spot, I can, you know, paint over it um, as needed. So, so stuff like this. You know, again, there's going to be a whole bunch of leaves on top of this thing. So... Just a few clicks here and there. That's what I'm doing now, just to get lighter leaves. It'll all sort of work out in the end um, as I'm going. So there we go. That's the that's basically what I did for the background trees. Um, and um, the last core content I need to do is the sort of the, the big tree I have here and the even bigger one I have, have here in the drawing. There's some finishing touches after that, but we are getting pretty close to finishing this drawing. So I did the uh, couple of the foreground trees very similar to the way I did these background trees, starting in Illustrator. But I did have to do a few, few more complex things to those trees as they sort of became more in the foreground and took took a few more steps. So I'm going to jump into Illustrator here, make a new tree layer, and um, I can really start by drawing um, that same shape so I had the tree sort of coming out over this way and coming down in and I can I can go ahead and just apply that same graphic style just to start one of the things we'll notice it's obviously in the in the foreground it is um, it's bigger uh, and it has a few more details to it so unfortunately at this point the, the best way to make it bigger is to really just change um, the the stroke and I could I could probably do a little bit in, in, in Photoshop, which I will uh, as well, but I don't know what I, I can't remember what I use now. I'll try 70. You'll see it'll only it'll only adjust um, that one layer. It's probably probably used more than that. I try 80. Let's see what 80 looks like. Yeah, we'll go with 80 again. I had, I do have some wiggle room in Photoshop to adjust scales as well, but they're all the same, right? So it's easy since I know they're all the same. All I have to go now is change all of these to 80. And I will get this set up to the bigger scale. In fact, I could have, I don't know why I didn't do it like I did last time, which is just to use the scale tool, which I can I can also use to make things bigger. Um, so if I just did scale, you can see it all sort of equally gets bigger. I got a little bit of tree uh, uh, surface missing down there. I could fix that later. Probably won't matter much. I could adjust this layer to, to fit in if I needed to, but we'll go with that. The other thing I did is um, I actually changed the um, base a little bit. So I came in here under like the stroke and I came to the stroke thickness and sort of near the base, I sort of pulled it out a little wider like that. Uh, so it just spreads out. I can I'll have to pull out this bottom one as well. So, you know, it just gets a little bit wider at the base here. So it springs out and could even come through. I want to sort of skinny it back down, whatever. Sort of make like a little knotty base like that. Um, so it's a little tricky to sort of see my layer color 
it's gray is hard to see these things. Let me let me change this to like orange. So I hopefully see the line. There we go. See a little bit better now. Um, because when I come in and try to find those widths, you know, I can come come and make adjustments. Again, we're just we're just doing one at this point. Um just the base layer. Let me move that down. Uh, but we'll see, we can apply this pretty easily. So, so there we go, it sort of stretches out. It's a nice little detail. Uh, what I can come over here, that's the profile. What I can do is I can add profile to my list and it'll be made. And then again, I just have to go to the appearance box and select each one of these guys and make that new uh, thing, the profile. Which is this, is it the bottom one? Um, oh, I guess the width, I have a width issue because it's changing. So why don't I just regularize this if that ended up being 166, let's do 165, make it a little smaller. So 165, make that, so yeah, now it's filling it up, 165. So these little, little tricks that you can use, it's filling up. So come here to this guy, change the profile to so that bottom one, change the width to 165, oh, it fills it up, perfect. Come to this guy, oh, change the profile, something down there, change the width to 165, and so on and so forth. Now, I have a couple foreground changes. Actually, the, the trick was I only did this once because the, the one that's way in the foreground is actually just a duplicate of this one. So I didn't I didn't change it. Just I just changed some of the coloring and, and, and orientation and mirroring and things like that. I don't remember exactly what I did. So so here we go. We got this tree in here. It's looking a little wide in this section. Um, and I could probably, maybe I'll just go and sort of um, adjust that. Um, you know, I can pull pull it skinnier. If I change it skinnier, I'm going to have to change all these settings again. Um, so let me just pause and do that so I don't bore you guys too much. Here we go. You see, I just controlled the width to be what I wanted. The, the issue was I had to keep going into each layer, adjust the width tool, and that's what it takes. And it did take some time, so you didn't need to see all the step. But you can see it sort of gets wider near the bottom and sort of evens out as we go here. Now, there was one other uh, set of detail that I used here. Um, and what I did is I have the swatch already in this file, I think, because I made it. I'm going to see if it's in here. Uh, is that swatch now? Um, I guess I don't have it in this file. That's okay. Um, what I did is I went into Photoshop, and I'll I'll make it new right now. Went into Photoshop, and I made this long file. I already have it. You can see I I made it here. So I made this moss. I wanted to add this like moss stuff to it. So, um, I just came in. Let's see why I didn't open. Let me try. Here we go. That'll work. And I just took a paintbrush. I found like a streaky line paintbrush and just sort of streak these lines down. And then I did like a stained glass and paint daubs to sort of speckle it up, add some noise, and created just this like sort of really rough shape just like this and saved it as a PNG. So we got moss PNG. And then what I did is um, when I came into uh, cancel that. When I came into Illustrator, what I do is I place this in. Uh, where did I just say that? Yeah, here we go. Make sure it's not linked. Sort of draw a big box over where you want to be. I want some parts to show through and some not to, and I'll have to adjust this later. But once it's in about where I want, I click and drag and put it in there. And then I select the tree trunk. Uh, I make a new stroke that's duplicated of everything else. And it, and it was not the top one because that was some extra detailing. I think it was above the bark one, which is right there. Changed it to this new texture that I made. And I want to change the opacity and its settings. So set it to normal, sort of change the the opacity as, as you need to. And now I've got this little bit of green moss on it. If I press the black arrow and the tilde key, you can see I got this really strange line up here, but I'm just going to move this whole thing up out of the way. So so it sort of just pulls up this tree and it sort of ends there and I got this splotchiness right there. And so it's sort of this, this mossy look. And that's how I made that tree. 
uh, I made some branches and things as well, but I pulled those in as, as different layers. Um, they could have been done at once, but I just did control C to copy came over to my main file. Now I need to, now that I'm sort of working on top of the background layer here. Um, uh, so I'm going to make, I'm going to put it in a different zone. Um, in fact, this tree is probably going to be in a couple different layer spots as I'm thinking about it. Uh, cause I want the trunk behind that, uh, boat. So it's going to make, uh, uh, why don't I, I'm going to make a new group right here and just paste it into this group as a pixel pull this forward and I want it want it somewhere like that make it nice and big oh something just like that it looks pretty good um, and then what I want to do is uh, give me a second I think I want um, what I'm gonna do with this tree call it tree oops is that where I put it that's fine I'm putting this group drag drop down Call the layer tree. Um, I'm going to just go to image adjust uh, hue saturation and just start to darken it uh, a bit. Not too dark, but uh, darker than the background trees is going to look nice. So, you know, somewhere around there, I can always go and adjust it. It was one simple tree. If I need to adjust it, I can run it again. I didn't think I needed to save it as a layer. Uh, again, if I want it to be bigger, maybe I just, uh, you know, change the scale, control T, edit the scale, make it bigger, make it a little bit more prominent, just right there as we go to have that foreground tree. And uh, then th then I created some branches off of this tree. Uh, and I did that again in Illustrator the exact same way, uh, you know, except for its different thicknesses. And instead of the lighting being from side to side, it's top to bottom. Um, but I can make a new layer, call it branches. And I can come in with this. Actually, let me unlock this because I, I do want to keep the moss on it. So I'll make that on a separate graphic style. And maybe even just for clarity's sake, I'll actually turn off that tree layer, come up, up to branches. And uh, sometimes we ha I have to do these backwards. It's just easier. We'll see what happens as I go ahead and draw it. Uh, let's just draw a, a red color, pink color, just for to start and you know sort of have this thing come up like that um, let's draw another one maybe down like that wherever you want the branches to be maybe there's one out here some of these can go be behind the branch and some can go go in front but there's probably some branches like that so so what I'll do is I'm going to set these now this is obviously going to be way too thick because branches need to be skinnier from the, the original graphic style yeah so so you can see how see how uh, the lighting on this one came out right, but um, it's backwards. So I should have tested this first because I can get that to work just based on orientation. So if I go like from left to right, let me just test this out. The the lighting is on the top, but the the thickness is on the back side, which is fine. So this branch could work for this right hand branch over here, although I don't need that much room. Um, but I always want to work from left to right. Now, the thing is, the other thing is, um, I want to sort of have some of these mirrored, but I should be able to do object transform reflect uh, horizontally. Um, and we can see the lighting stays right, but um, actually, it's because oh, it's I want to go vertically. There we go. So, yeah, to do it vertically, to get the thickness on the right side, I have to draw it in the opposite direction. I know that's a bit confusing, but and I always have to draw these these tests out whenever I do this step, but it's better than starting from scratch. So again, to draw this branch, I have to draw from left to right. So I want to draw like this, and I'll set that branch. So it's, um, actually, this is drawn the right way. Oh, it's up, upside down. Man, I will get this. I will get this. So this was right to left. Is that what I want to do? Right to left. Branch like this, set it. Let's see if we get this. Out. There we go. See, now that branch is coming off. It's just way too thick. So I have to come into graphic appearance. I'm going to pause it because I'm just going to make this way skinnier. So I just made the th thickness of that branch just 40 uh, thick. And so now what I'll do is I'll come over here. And what is it? Uh, I've already forgotten. Right to left? No, it's 
Yeah, right to the left, left. I'll just do the test and draw a brick thing. What I'm actually going to do is, why don't I cheat? I can get a, very far by saving this little branch as a graphic style there. And, okay, I got the lighting on the right side, but I have the thick end on the wrong side. So I got to go to Object, Transform, Reflect. Um, and so it's upside down. Now the, now the lighting is upside down. Um, so let's try to object transform. Let's see if I reflected the other way horizontally, was well, this going to work now? Nope. It doesn't work. Uh, that's okay. Um, so let me try the other way. Uh, we'll get this. What if I... All right, I just had to pause it and just figure this out to make sure I was way overthinking it. It's pretty simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this line, you know, something like that. Nice long branch here. I use my same graphic style that I used for that branch. Now, the lighting is correct. It's just that the thickness is on the wrong side. All I have to do, and it'll take just a few seconds here, I have to come to each of these strokes in here and reverse the actual direction of the profile so we can see here it's brown there and i just have to go through just like i have to do for all these trees is do each one of these layers but as soon as i flip them all it will look like a branch is supposed to look like coming from that side so there you go and now they got to the, the sort of left hand side trunks i can sort of save that as its own independent graphic style you know, and make another one that may, maybe it goes up like that, and it can it can be like that. And what I'm going to do is I purposely separated these three three branches because I can move those wherever I need to in um, uh, in Photoshop as I need to go and scale them. So maybe they're not all quite the same scale, but for now I'll just select all three of them and copy them and come into into Photoshop and paste them in and as pixels. And you know, make them pretty big. Put them however I want. It's probably too big. Probably too big. I don't need it to be that big. There we go. Even smaller than that in reality. Something like that's probably pretty good. And We'll set those in. And so some things I can do is like maybe this trunk stays out front, but maybe these trunks are coming from behind the tree. So what I can do is now that I'm in here, I can just select these two pieces of the branches, cut them out, paste them back in below the tree itself, um, and move them into place. And so we see so we can move them wherever I want to move them now, and they're sort of they're sort of hidden in there. And if I need to, I mean, the, the brightness contrast looks pretty good. Um, in theory, they're probably a bit bright, but you can go and adjust those as you need to. And and um, I even added other little details. They're pretty minor, but you can make like a new layer, select like a black color. And I just painted on a couple knots and things. So I just went to like a standard size brush, pretty small, but a standard brush, zoomed in and... Uh, like I just sort of faked in a little knot, you know, like here, something like that. And then I sort of faked in a little bit of a shadow edge on, on here for this trunk just to help it out a little bit visually. Of course, what I did is totally took the transparency on these way down. And when you zoom out and start adding the trees, just adds a little bit of detail. A little bit of blur on there probably would help too since it's a shadow. So I go to like filter, blur, uh, up. Um, or even Gaussian blur, blur, so I can have a little more control over that blur. Who knows where those little tiny shadows are across the whole drawing? They're right up in here. You know, we can see that's probably a little strong, but I can set it and just set that in and just add those little bit of details. And again, reality is when I did this, I drew the knot a couple times because it looks a little small there. I mean, I can go and select this and just scale that knot up a little bit, whatever. 
way you want to make it redraw it move it wherever i want but you know those little details are sort of fun to add and think about um sort of as you go and then of course what i did is i added leaves to this tree and this was this was fun a fun experiment here um in this case i purposely changed the leaves to a green color to really offset this is a different tree it's a different kind of tree the leaves change at a different time you know whatever the case might be um uh, so i'm going to make a new layer and some of these leaves were in front uh, some of them were in back, like I used a couple different layers in front of the tree and back of the tree in front of the house, so on and so forth. But I basically did the same way as I made these leaves. I just used uh, sort of a darker color, green, green tones, pretty dark probably. You can always adjust colors as, as I need to, but um, I'm trying to think what colors I may have even used. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, I can always change. We'll start by drawing something like this, um, two sets of greens. And I did leave, I did leaves in several steps here because as we get to the foreground, it becomes more and more important to sort of nail them and get them correct. But we'll come here, we'll go to uh, my leaf and try to try to put this on. I think what I need to do is I need to change the scale a little bit. Those are a little big and I'm going to come to my brush settings. Um, and actually go down to um, scattering, I think, and put the count down a little bit. Let's um, maybe even we're scattering them a little wider so I can just get it. Yeah, probably a little small now, you know, just back and forth and back and forth and trial and error. Try something like this. There we go. That's that's looking pretty good. I can change. I'll change. Come back and change the color a little bit later. But, uh, you know, paint them around, sort of want to have less, less over on the right-hand side and more starting to get over in this zone out in here. You know, and if I paint them correctly, I might not even have to use too many layers. Follow where there might be some branches down, things like this. So now the key, the key to this, again, was that um, I... Uh, had a couple different layers and I used a couple different leaf types and I added some filters to these as well But I'm gonna make I'm gonna make another leaf layer. I could probably start labeling these layers got a little This tree here I didn't have all the labels, but I can do that now so leaf two so there's like I went to another uh, sort of brush that's sort of in here um, This sort of uh, leaf brush here or even scattered leaves are it's much more transparent in looking but softer but i thought it added a nice touch just as sort of as a background darkening up some zones you know and was not not too bad and actually what i did for this project as well is i made a third and um, what i did is i just made some random shape uh not a random shape i made like an ellipse and I filled it black because I made my own sort of custom brush. So I went over to, to brushes and um, um, so I'm going to go to edit, uh, define brush preset, and call it this. And when it comes up over here, I can go to brush settings and I can do a lot of the same settings, which is on the, on the maple leaf. I just want a different shape because it looks a little too, too common there. So, so I can go to like shape dynamics and check sizing. Uh, I can do different angles of these things, different roundnesses of these things, these things to give them. We'll, we'll see what the size comes out. That'll be brush size. We'll definitely need to do scattering. So we'll scatter these things quite far. Take the count low, and count jitter a little bit. We'll see how that both axes is perhaps be good. We'll sort of separate that out. Um, color dynamics. We'll want to do pretty much what was before. We can adjust some of these things. We'll see see how it goes, and um, then we can come over here and try to paint this on. Okay, why is this not painting? Let's see, what is the brush setting set to? There, it's because I have that selected. and deselect that, in fact. You can just delete that because I've sort of made the brush already. 
I don't need that anymore. And I have that selection set, but now that I don't, I should come in and sort of do that here. So we can see that it's way too big, um, probably way too dense, but obviously scale can be changed here. And um, I can adjust the scattering. The other thing I can do is just click and let go and just click a couple places and just push down a few of these leaves as I go. And the more I move my mouse, the more it goes. But that's just, again, to just hide that, that maple leaf pattern just a little bit, just like that, uh, begins to work. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add something like noise to all of these layers. So I'll go filter, uh, noise, add some noise to this just to see if we can find where, where are these leaves in this image. Here we go. See this custom one I made. We just want to add a bit of noise. Um, we don't even, yeah, let's keep it, let's keep it um, monochromatic. We don't need a lot, something like that. We'll just say, okay, I'm just going to add it to all three of these leaf layers. So now I can just do add noise once I've done it once. Filter, add noise to add it again. So I add a bit, bit of a touch. Now what I'm going to do is actually going to make a subgroup in this here and put the leaves all inside this subgroup for the tree. And that's just so I can come up to this group and apply hue saturation and other color changes to it all as once because um, the colors still aren't quite right. Um, uh, so what I'll do is I'll go to my adjustments, hue saturation, get this to be up there. And uh, what I want to do is I want to take them more towards yellow, not super towards yellow, but a bit more towards yellow, just like that. And I might actually saturate them a bit more, which might mean the darkness comes down just a little bit. And just play with this until you get the color ranges that you want. You know, something like that begins to feel good. I can always go and paint more uh, as, I, as I need to, or even, you know, um, clone stamp some of these existing leaves if I want to want to add more. But you know that's that's starting to feel pretty good. So we'll we'll add that those set of leaves there. Um, and so now what we'll come down to is we'll go add the sort of the last tree I had, which is way in the foreground over here. And I'm pretty sure the way I did that is just by copying this tree here. So what I'm going to do is I'll come down to this tree trunk. Here, which I believe is this, is that layer? Yep, I'll just duplicate this guy. Uh, of course, he's going to be way out front, so I got to drag and drop this layer way to the top here, all the way even above grass. Get up there. I'll get it. There we go. And I moved it over to the side, sort of the edge of my drawing is approximately that blue line, so I want the tree to be down. I'm going to really just scale this guy up. Pretty large here. And actually, you know what I did? I did I did do one other thing because of the shape, because I didn't want to do too much work, but I think well, I'm just gonna do it this way. I might have gone to Illustrator and drawn a new line and just use the same graphic style. That's what I did. Uh, but I guess I can do that. It won't take that long. Let's just get rid of this because you can totally tell that's the same tree. And I don't want it to be that that somewhere. So let's delete that. Um, we can even delete this whole layer here. No problem whatsoever. Jump, jump in the Illustrator. I already saved this as a graphic style, pretty sure. I think it's this one. If not, I can always redo it. So I just drew another, another tree over here of some shape. It's going to come down pretty low in this case. Make it the same graphic style, just like that. But it's not an identical tree. If I want to adjust the lines, I, I can go ahead and do that. Copied it brought it into Photoshop, paste it in right at the top as pixels, um, scaled it way up. Uh-oh, I only got part of it. I know why I did that. Let's undo that. The thing is, when I'm over here, I didn't have this whole tree selected. It only selected the last segment. So let me go and copy that again. That happens sometimes. Just had to deselect and reselect it. Um, at the group layer, paste it in as pixels. Try to move it off the drawing, make it pretty big. And if I want to make it a little bit wider and fatter, I can sort of do that too, just like that. Um, 
put it off to the side, set it. And the one thing that I did do is I completely changed the hue saturation, made it much more dark, much more dark. Um, actually, I probably played with the levels um, too because I wanted to keep the brights fairly bright. Um, so let me go try play with levels as well, which might allow me to sort of make some of these brights brighter, but make the darks darker like that. Even pull the mid-tones to, to something like that. I'm going to have a bit of a line there, but, you know, I think it'll be okay. Probably it's too bright on the bright. Yeah, that, that'll start start to help it there. And say, say okay, like that. So I got this big tree in the foreground. And then I think what I did do in this case, I duplicated it itself and said okay. And I just um, moved it to the bottom and, like, rotated it a bit. That's scaling it. I probably scaled it a little bit too. Rotate it a bit like that. Put it off to the side. Deleted the part away that I didn't want down here. Like this, so it looks like this tree is sort of double branching. You know, it's like one tree that grows into two. Those are sort of cool. So I just just did that, copied it, pasted it over there. Now I added some some leaves to the foreground just to like cover this up. Like maybe some of the leaves are, these leaves are coming down as well. So I can go ahead and, and add that. What I might do is um, I've got the same same color selected. And uh, so I should be able to just go ahead and go to the paintbrush. I can start with this guy. It's already set. This might just paint a few down there, just like this. So get it in front of the building. Um, filter, add noise, add that same noise. Make another layer. Um, change it to the maple leaf. You know, do some like there, maybe a little over here coming up, just like that. Add the noise, maybe play with the color just a little bit because I did the last time. I could have copied the old leaves. That could have been something else I didn't, but just bring it right into tonal quality, just like that. Now I've got some of these leaves sort of covering the front of the building as well. That's sort of key and that's, that's important. Um, and let's see, what else can I do? What I'll start doing next is like these trees that are sort of this house sort of sits within. They're gonna they're they're gonna cast shadows on the building itself, and the reflections of the window is gonna be sort of affected by these trees. And so I'm gonna start adding those details to it. So if I come over, what I what I want to do is I want to come up on top of my building uh, layers, my house layers. I'm gonna make a new group for tree effects. Call it whatever. I'm going to call it tree effects. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to like paint br branches on here. So, and what I, what I basically did is I went into Google and found branches that were sort of cut out like this. And I just copied them and pasted them into this um, group. And I just sort of rotated it and scaled them, you know, scale it up rotate it so like oh there's a shadow of a branch coming there of course what i need to do is turn the opacity way down and the other thing to really help this out too is i need to really make it blurry um, so i'll go like blur gaussian blur and i can play with these settings to sort of really fade that out just give a rough shape of what what that is that might be a little too much but you know once i get the blur right I can also then come and sort of readjust the transparency, which doesn't have to be that large. I, I pretty much use the same branch over and over again a few times. So I'm just going to duplicate the layer, sort of move it around. You know, I'm going to rotate it, scale it, whatever the case might be, to sort of just give these depths of branches coming through. You know, something like that. And you can add more. Maybe there should be another one coming down from there or from the corner, whatever the case may be. This is a little bit of shadows start to look look pretty cool just like that. I could even arguably make them a little, little bit more blurry, but um, I think that's good enough for now. Um, now, the other thing I want to do is I want to add some reflections because glass is really quite reflective. So I want to reflect like it's reflecting trees. And so to do that, I'm going to jump back to, yeah, this is the one. Any fall foliage will really work. I want to make sure I don't get any of these big branches or anything in there, but I'll come into maybe like this zone in here. 
Um, I think this will work well. And it'll just copy that zone out, come in here um, and paste this in. And so I'm gonna do these side windows um, first. So I'll scale this up to whatever seems like would be a good scale. It's definitely bigger than I need it to be, um, but you know, so something like that. What I'll do is I'll temporarily just, I'll just turn this off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm zooming. I could use, again, I could use a layer mask to do this um, if I wanted to sort of save it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select out the areas using polygon lasso of where there's glass. You can almost see it there, but not frame. And uh, so it'll take a few moments. And then I'll delete everything else. And I go to add selection set. And what it'll be left with, I'll just have a zone of those trees right where there's glass. And it's going to be a reflection. I have to make some adjustments to it once I've done deleting it, as you'll see. But just to get that picture just in these areas where there's actually glass. There, so that's the top half. And we've got little bits down on the bottom as well. Now this video is getting exciting, isn't it? All these little selection sets. Moving quite quickly here, maybe a little too quickly, but uh, there we go. So now when I turn the layer back on, I'm going to do select inverse and delete. And so we can see I've got those that reflection here. Now I want to make some adjustments to it. I'll start with uh, just transparency so we can start to see below. And, and actually for the side window, transparency might be fine. Um, what I probably want to do is since it's a little you know, blurry back here. It's a little sharp here. So I'll probably get some filter on there just like I did before. So let's go filter gallery. Probably don't need to go as extreme, although that's exactly what I use for the background image. So it remembers, I'm just going to hit save. And so we can see now it feels like this glass is reflecting sort of a very similar quality as what's happening out there. I could adjust the brightness or contrast or anything else as we might want. And I'm going to go back and I'm just going to take the same shape i could do a different bunch you know if i wanted to be a little more clever about it maybe i'll take this bunch of trees over here copy that out come back in here and make a new layer over top but i'm going to work on the foreground reflections now i want to be able to see mostly through this but really this back wall is going to be what's causing most of the reflections the the light here i'll be able to see through so all i need to do is um scale up over that zone somewhere sort of get it to the correct scale and um i'm going to turn this off and i'm going to start by just deleting you know getting out the window areas again just like i did last time we're going to see this is going to be much more subtle so i can go even more quickly in theory it's not going to happen at that window so i can go here and I'm selecting a wider area than I need because I know it doesn't go over that area uh, on this zone, but that's okay. So come here, this probably get a little bit of the reflection there. I don't remember if it came out over here, so I'll just make sure I get this somewhat selected there, right? So just make sure, oh, see, there's that little little tail down here I have to, have to get. And really, I also know I want to make sure I have nothing low, so I can just add all of that to it. Probably have to cut, fix up some of it as I go. It's a little messy, but I'll select inverse and delete just to get started, just like that. And yeah, I just need to add. I need to add this back in. This bottom frame. Let's delete that out of there, right? So now what I'm going to do? I am going to use a layer mask for this next step. I'm going to layer mask it here, and I'm going to go to black and white, and I'm going to go to to gradient, and I'm gonna to go to radial gradient, I think, and start sort of, sort of in here. Um, gradient. Oh, I gotta change it to black and white. There we go. Black and white radial. Okay, got it. And I'll do this, and so we can see up in here where it's the darkest. I have the reflections, but as I sort of get out over here, it is not reflecting anymore. Right now, that's way too bright um let me go let me jump back to my regular layer let's add those filters back in if i do filter gallery it should give me the exact same filter gallery that i had last time 
So there we go, add there, and then I'll just play with my transparency. This wants to be like way down, just a little bit of sense of blurriness and that's sort of reflecting something up in there. I could probably even turn down the reflection just a little bit there. So get a little reflection off that glass. The key reflection was on that side there. Um, let's see, you know, some other things I sort of added to this. I mean, at this point, we're sort of getting uh, down towards sort of finishing touches. Um, there's still various things we can do. But um, like I think I added some smoke coming out of this uh, chimney. So I might go back to the house, uh, make a new layer there. And uh, I basically just painted some stuff on there, you know, obviously in white or light gray. Um, I don't exactly remember how I did it, but that's OK. You sort of figure it out as you go. I'm going to pick a paintbrush that's sort of fuzzy at the edges, you know, one of these standard ones like this. Um, I'm going to make it skinnier. And uh, just sort of, you know, pull up. I'm going to have to take it be be below the leaf layer. Um, that's perfectly fine. But I just sort of did this. So, so I'll call this smoke. Obviously, I got to pull it behind the, the leaf. So it's not going to end up in the house layer. Pull this down above the background, but above the trees. Behind the trees, behind the leaves, right there. Yep, there we go, right behind the leaves there. I can I can add some noise to it. Probably not as much as I did before. So let's go to add noise, check it out. Pull it down just a little bit. You know, add some transparency to this. So you sort of see through it. And I could um, probably come in here and color dodge and burn it to get some highlighting uh, in there. This paintbrush is going to be much smaller to do this, you know, sort of paint some bright spots in the smoke. This can be very subtle. I want it to be a little bit brighter as it's coming out because that's where it's going to be a little bit denser. You know, I can try to color burn it to get a little bit of shadowing in there as well. Arguably such a small detail, but you know, zoom out and you know, get a little bit of smoke coming right out of that chimney. Right, just like that. So we got some smoke coming out of there. Uh, one important feature I added to this document is sort of like what I'm calling the light rays, like the light shining down off to the side. It's definitely probably time to start doing that. That's where this bright spot in the house will start to make sense too. I think when I made the light rays the first time, I actually set up the geometries in Illustrator so I can control them more easily. But you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and give it a try in Photoshop in this case. And um, I want them to be behind this tree, but pretty much in front of anything else. So um, it's not really going to be on top of the grass uh, much, but I'll call this light rays. Um, it's not going to go down that that low, but um, light rays. But I'll still put it on the layer above that. OK, there we go. I'll make a new layer for that. And I'll just choose my. Uh, polygon lasso tool. I'm going to come down from the side and sort of come down pretty far. I'm going to have this nice little wide one that sort of matches this corner. And see, the, the tricky thing is to sort of, you know, get these to be parallel like that. If I want to make it wider, I can just add to it. I should sort of feel like a little wider on this slide one like that. Come up on this building, I think it'll all be okay purposely sort of stopped it short a little bit there. Then then I want to have one sort of coming off to the side at pretty much the same angle. That's not going to work. Just a little bit of space in between hitting this window over here. It can be pretty skinny like that. And a couple skinny ones coming down basically the same angle right over here. Pretty skinny in this case as well. The, the edges are all going to be feathered. So we should be okay with that. Um, we'll see. There we go. Like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my color to be white. Um, I'm going to try to do it this way. Let's see what happens. I'm going to fill it all white without feathering. Didn't even have to change the color. Just edit fill white. And what I'm going to try to do is Control D. I'm going to deselect and go filter, blur. I'm going to go. I'm going to just do like Gaussian blur and just turn my Gaussian blur like way up. See how it feathers it out automatically like that? Say OK. And of course what I'm going to do is like turn the transparency like way down, right? So to, to, to get 
what you want, some, something like that, right? So um, the nice thing about when I did it in Illustrator, I had a little bit more control because I can go back and change. I can't change the Gaussian blur here where I could have done that in Illustrator, which is why, why I had some preference. But I'm close enough, you know, um, for this drawing to, to get it in there and get the bright spots sort of coming down. They're matching the bright spots on the building. Some fun little light rays coming in there just to, to make the drawing look cool in that sense. Um, so here we go, some light razor in there. Um, let's see, what else did I add to this drawing? I think that was pretty much, most of pretty much the main content I have there, but I added a lot of texture and noise and, and various other things and cropping and things to sort of finalize this drawing. So, um, so why don't I start that now? Um, and one of the things I did is I sort of took the whole image, and again, knowing that it's light over here and corners are dark, I basically just made another gradient of um, like a great, I'll call it gradient layer. Um, change this to black for my color, and went to gradient, went to linear gradient. I did black to transparent. So I'll do black to transparent, do linear gradient basically did this big like sort of swath over like this and just way faded it down but just to sort of darken up that side of the drawing a bit more again sort of enhance that lighting quality um, I did a bunch of filtering techniques and I don't remember exactly every one I did um, but I think I used a graphic pen layer on one and so I want to do that to the whole to like all the objects so what I'm going to do temporarily is flatten this all layer I'm going to flatten image Right, it's going to take away all my layers temporarily. I'm just going to control A and control C to copy it and go file new so I can sort of work in another another file again temporarily as I do this. So here it is. It's all as one layer. Well, I want to make sure I don't lose my layer. So I'm going to come back to my original file and do control Z enough to get my layers back. What I can do now is when I come over to, to the drawing that I pasted this in, I can start to work on certain certain elements. So I know... When I did graphic pen, I sort of based it off the oranges um, as my foreground color. I went to filter, um, filter gallery, and um, graphic pen. Get this to go here. Let's see. It's thinking down here. There we go. Oh, I need to change the other color to black. That's not... It's not going to work without doing it to black, I guess. So let me let me change this color to black also. Filter. Let's go back to filter gallery and go back to graphic pen. I don't remember what settings I used. Um, I made it very light across the whole thing. So um, something like this and. Let's say, okay, let's see how this looks. I don't remember if I inversed it or not. Um, those, those strokes are a bit thin, but let's just see what happens if I copy this. I should have duplicated the layer first because I can use them for other things. So, so I paste it on top, and what I can do is I can do blending modes, like if I do this and sort of really take the transparency down a lot. You can see it just sort of adds it sort of unifies the colors a bit adds a bit of the line work to it back a little bit and things like that and you'll see I'll, I'll add lines in again um to so i did a fun little line trick as well so i just did that little layer adds noise noise to the whole thing you know the thing i'm doing i'm gonna darken the foreground a little bit it's very similar to that gradient so i'll just make a another layer here go gradient to again pull the the goal is to pull the image up, foreground being black, um, going to black to transparent, sort of going from that zone there, right? And then set the transparency to whatever darkness you want. Again, pull it, pulling it sort of us up into the drawing like that. You know, we'll get this all a little more textury. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing now that I have some of these, you know, gradients and things set again. I'm going to image, flatten image, just temporarily, or layer, I should say, flatten image. Say OK. Select it all. Copy it. Come over to this file or 
testing it over here paste it in undo so i can get my layers back just in case because i'm sure you know in the real world i go back and make adjustments to a bunch of these layers back and forth and back and forth um, and then image and add something like noise to this whole thing in this case i might bump up the noise a fair amount um, so i did for that sort of give it all this texture to that file image that's probably too much play with it adjust it way you like it copy and sort of paste that back in and you know this is a time you can uh oops i want to take it actually above that layer this is a time you can play with overall brightness contrasts of things um levels um i'll often just set it maybe even doing like an auto level just to pull it all together in that format like that and you just say okay and this is sort of becomes the, the top layer just becomes your your final image there's one other thing i did do to this if i recall just to pull out the house just a little bit more to make it pop just a little bit what i did is i went back and i reopened uh, a layer from my sketchbook output um, i actually went to my lines um, i don't remember now if i used my endscape lines or my sketchup lines um, you know what I did? I actually used these lines, didn't I? Yeah. So what I did is I actually exported an auto. I exported my SketchUp way here. I went here and I exported this as an AutoCAD file. Um, and then an AutoCAD, um, uh, I printed it as a PDF. The reason for that is I wanted these nice crisp lines because I was having difficulty with that earlier. So then I went to File Open and um, don't exactly remember where I saved it. Not there. Gonna have to just pause for a sec. All right, so here we go. Here's the AutoCAD file. Boom, popped it up. Again, this was just export that perspective. Because I'm exporting as a DWG, it doesn't take in any materials or anything. It only takes in the lines in perspective. So to get them to Illustrator, I could open this file directly into Illustrator, but I think it's going to be easier. I always find it usually to be easier just to go to File Plot, um, set my print to, to PDF, you know, get it centered uh, in there and say, okay, now I bet, okay, good, this is going to work. So save this um, some location. I'll save it there, print this as a PDF. It'll sort of make this PDF automatically. You know, I can just close that down. This is a, um, and what I can do is I'm going to open it in Illustrator because I just want the lines. I want the to be transparent. I could use, well, you're going to see, you're going to see why I'm going to do this. It's going to make sense. So I'll just go file open in Illustrator. Um, and I save that under CAD stuff here. Here we go. And it's sideways, that's okay. I'm going to just copy it because all I want is the line work when I bring in. And I don't want to deal with multiply or anything like that. Again, you'll see why. I'll paste this in and I'll have to scale it up. As I need to. Again, I might take a, a few seconds here to get it correctly scaled. Get it in there like that, close enough. I could probably zoom in and get a little better, but it's looking pretty good. What I actually ended up doing for this drawing is I actually ended up inverting this layer, which is why I want the, I want the white to read. Um, so I'll go uh, adjustments invert and get it nice and, and white. And I'm gonna delete this stuff down. I don't, don't need anything below this wall here. It's fine, just get that, delete that from there. The white I thought just helped it pop a lot. And now that's way too bright, but I can tone down this to the adjustment to whatever I want. I think I added some noise in it. So go add some noise to that layer just to give it that same texture that was on the layer below. And just that little bit of line work, I'll call it lines, just helps just helps that building pop a little bit. So I thought it was was pretty nice to do. Um, again, you can go and maybe, you know, go to layer 20. Often I'll end up doing some level controls and other such things to get it to where I want, but it's looking pretty good. So the last step is to crop this. Now, usually what I'll do is I, let me, before I crop it, let me just say I'd save this file 
um, and I'd save my Illustrator file so I can come back if I want to make any adjustments to these things. I can save it. It's just a, a play file, right? I also have another play file, which is that whole background stuff. I'll probably save this file as well. Um, once it's saved, I'll think about cropping. I don't want to lose all my edges, but certainly to make a final output, I want to crop it. And you do want to spend some time thinking about the crop orientation and the really composition of what this thing looks like. The, the blue lines were a start, right? That's This is a start of where I was thinking, but I know I'm going to crop it more than that as well, because when I look at it like this, I pull it, all this extra stuff away. The, the building seems to be really sort of too small on the screen, sort of too low. I know, I think, you know, if, if, I, if I come down with a, the top layer, maybe the rule of third starts to hit the top of the house a little bit just to focus this towards the center. Again, left and right, wherever you want to adjust it. Um, you know, really, I can probably cut off a lot of this right-hand side. doesn't even matter. Um, I can potentially cut off some, some of this uh, left or right side just to sort of frame the house where where you want it to go and then you know I can break it a little bit that's a little bit too much cut off so let's pull it up a little bit and have some fun when you get I mean I, I I really spend so much time thinking about crop tools in the end I'll do it a bunch of times but here we go you got it then you can save it as uh, just an image uh, for the final crop is usually what I do um, and go back and so this is where I just created the original one is here so you can see that some of the colors are a bit different I spent more time playing with brightness contrast transparencies and all that to sort of pop the rays a little bit and uh, this one's clearly looks a bit uh, this has more saturation to it so I might go and change the hue saturation of this top layer to pull it down but you can keep making these changes uh, and Really, the point is, that's how you use SketchUp, AutoCAD, Photoshop, Illustrator to draw whatever you want. It's all about control. Illustrator gives you great tools to draw sort of whatever you want and any style you want. Photoshop has the tools to, to, to color, correct them, to paint certain things on as you need to. And really creating great drawings in the computer is a lot of hands-on work, just as it would be by hand. Um, and in the end, this image is very little bit about the final rendering engine, even though the modeling and, and rendering engine were important to it, it's about how I controlled it in the end. So have fun making great drawings, and I hope you enjoyed this video that really showed holistically how I put a drawing together. Good luck making your own drawings.